we made it right on time happy 2020 everybody uh welcome to mastermind academy again in 2020 um welcome back to anyone who attended the first go around you know the true ogs as usual we want to do a quick roll call i see somebody's here from brazil thank you for coming in uh who's that patrick welcome uh welcome to the channel um hope you enjoy it make yourself at home um but roll call where, where's everybody uh tuning in from um, I saw a lot of, I uh, checked my metrics today and I saw a lot of people from, I guess the Reddit reminders reminded a bunch of people. Um, so if you're, if you're here from Reddit, definitely give me a shout out as well. But I want to know people from, are from around the country. I'm out of, for those of you who don't know, I'm out of Baltimore, Maryland. Um, yeah, I'm actually in my office now in Baltimore, Maryland. There's actually, uh, right outside the window actually is the Baltimore Police Department. So if you guys hear any crazy sounds, there's a lot of stuff goes on out there. But uh, Memphis, we got Memphis in the house, Be More, Minneapolis, Georgia. He, oh, DMV, I'm, I'm assuming we're, we're in the DMV. There's a lot of places in the DMV. I'm from I'm from the DMV. I'm in Baltimore now, but I'm from I'm actually from uh, Largo. I guess it's rebranded as Upper Marlboro, but I'm from uh, from Largo, Cleveland, Alabama. Oh, man, we got people from all over Seattle, Brazil, St. Louis, Queens. Awesome. Alaska. Malcolm, 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 three, you, you're lying. You know, there's the internet. You're gonna get caught one day. Uh, you're not from Alaska. I know you from you're from down the street. Um, Austin, Texas, from Reddit, Denver. Awesome. Hi from Spain. Um, was that your drawer? Um, welcome, welcome, Argentina, Tyson's, cool upper Marlboro. Awesome. What's up, CJ? St. Louis. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, I'm. I am super excited to be back um super excited about this next round of boot camps um for for those of you who don't know we're not only running this one this time we are running a python one that starts tomorrow this one will run sundays and tuesdays and the python one will run mondays and wednesdays feel free to join both um you know we'll, we'll have a lot of good content on both um this one's gonna be a little more uh, i guess in depth than the python one um the python one is really an introduction to coding one uh just using python um so if you're interested in that at all definitely tune in oh we got someone from turkey welcome 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 to the channel seattle washington yes first i want everyone to give yourselves a pat on the back for being here um i think you 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 took the first step into you know uh the new year and bettering yourselves um, you know, you're, you're here, you're trying to get some information. Uh, you're trying to dive into something that's pretty difficult for people to dive into. Um, and I just want to applaud you on that, you know, for, you know, you can't, uh, you know, the, the journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. So welcome. I appreciate you being here. Uh, hopefully we're going to have some fun. Uh, hopefully we'll have a lot of fun. So, um, I'm actually, I actually have a whole new setup right now. Um, and I haven't had a ton of time to check it out make sure everything's good um so just trying to get used to it i have this uh cool little application you know i have my main streaming pc um now i have a, a bigger better streaming slash editing pc uh right now but the the, the laptop that we're actually going to using that you're seeing right now on your screen is actually a system 76 laptop uh so i have this little like weird synergy program that's going on where my mouse and my keyboard it's like a it's like a virtual kvm so when i move my mouse off of the screen of my windows pc um i can get down to the uh to the linux computer that's below it um so i'm just trying to just trying to get used to that workflow just trying some cool stuff out you know trying to make it a little bit better trying to do this outside of a vm i was using a vm on the last go around but that presents its own problems we learned a lot from the first time around remember we retro we wrote a bunch of things down and we made changes so one of the big problems was as we got into some deep stuff and we were downloading packages and uploading things that would that would obviously uh take over my internet connection and it would cause issues with the streams it would cause frame drops etc so we shouldn't have to deal with that anymore now that we have a completely separate stream pc but cool, tonight should be, uh, let me just move some of this stuff around. Tonight should be pretty cool, pretty nice and easy. Tonight is syllabus night, man. Uh, we're gonna learn about what we're gonna be doing over the next 12 weeks. This will be 12 weeks if you weren't aware. So we're gonna be talking about what we're gonna do over the next 12 weeks. We're also gonna dive in, tonight we're gonna dive into DevOps, talk about what DevOps is, really get you started. Um, if anyone is, uh, all the subscribers, so if, for anyone who doesn't know, if you're subscribed to the channel, uh, you will get access to uh, Google Classroom. The Google Classroom has some additional resources in it. It is complete this time. Last time uh, we had some trouble with it. It's complete, I'll send those out as soon as the stream is over. It will come with the slides. It will come with some additional resources. It will come with some um, 
different practice problems and quizzes and things like that throughout the 12 weeks to kind of help bolster everything. It'll come with some links and some videos and things like that as well. So if you're interested in that, um, go ahead and subscribe and you will get to those things. So it's that very the end. Uh, appreciate the subscription. Welcome to the family. Um, welcome to the family. You'll definitely, I'll definitely send those out a little bit later. And again, you'll get it for both uh, the DevOps one and the Python one if you're interested. Um, so appreciate that. Um, for those of you holding on to subscribe, I might have some good news for you in the next week or two um, about that, but um, I'll, I'll let you know as I get some more uh, information here. Uh, how do you subscribe? I don't know if you can do it from the phone. I, I ran into that last time people were asking, I was trying to explain how to subscribe and you couldn't, uh, I couldn't figure it out from the phone. Uh, there should be a button in the top right that'll allow you to subscribe uh, next to the follow button. If you have Amazon Prime, you should be able to link your account to Amazon Prime and you should be able to subscribe uh, for free if you do have Amazon Prime. If not, I think it's uh, $5 uh, per month. The the basic subscription is all that's necessary to get access to that. Make sure you join the Slack channel. Uh, we're about to go over that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get going tonight. Hopefully we can get through it pretty quick. I'll give you a little bit of time back. Just a heads up, the, the, the goal for all the streams um, is to keep it in a two hour block. So we're trying to go, we're trying to go from eight to 10, but some things that we learned last time, some of the, some of the different topics may take a little bit longer. Things like Kubernetes, uh, maybe Docker. I think we split up Docker into two parts last time. Uh, we we're supposed to do it last time, but something came up. So we did it in one this time it's in two parts. Uh, we should be able to get out of most of them in two hours. Some will go longer. Again, they will be available for your consumption uh, 60 for up to 60 days afterwards. I am going to be throwing them on YouTube as well. Uh, these will be overriding the ones that are currently on there. So as we record, we'll add and overwrite uh, the ones that are there now. So I'll upload this syllabus day one and I'll delete the, the current syllabus day one. Uh, so if you're if you're deep into the ones on YouTube, Keep going with it. As long as you finish before we finish, as long as you stay ahead, uh, you can view all of them. But cool. So let's start off um, real simple. So as usual, I got some slides for you. We'll go over some slides. We'll mess around. We'll ask any questions you have. We can dive into anything. Again, tonight is pretty chill. Tonight's pretty short. And um, well, I said that last time, and I think it still took the whole two hours. So let's get started. Again, welcome to Mastermind Academy. Welcome to the Masterminds Academy DevOps Bootcamp. This is round number two. This is the second time we did it. We're doing it. Uh, we did a pilot for anyone who doesn't know back in uh, August, August to October. We did a 12 week pilot. Uh, we learned a lot. We, we did a bunch of things there. You can go back and see those things on YouTube if you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, and uh, yeah, you can get all that information. Um, D Flare, no, there was not a session yesterday. Today is the first session of the boot camps. This is the very first session. Uh, there was one on January 1st. We did a goal setting session on January 1st. Um, so you, that should still be up and available if you want to go back and watch that. Um, but we'll we'll probably actually be covering some of that stuff here. But oh, thank you, well, man. A lot of people subbed. Um, Swagger, Swagger Jaquez, uh, thanks for the thanks for the sub. Uh, Cbon34, thanks for the sub. Uh, Vicky, thank you for the sub. Um, appreciate it. Welcome to the family. We're going to be learning a lot, so we'll get started. Um, let me let me move the mouse back down. Make sure I know which screen I'm on. Cool. So a lot of people ask me um, why this is on Twitch. Um, and so this is if this is your first time on Twitch, this is your Twitch introduction. Uh, Twitch is a gaming platform. You can see from the pictures there, the images there. It's for gaming. Uh, people stream games on Twitch, uh, but there are a few uh, people have branched out on Twitch. So there's a I think there's a there's a science and technology uh, section, which which we're streaming in right now. Some other people do some live coding on here, et cetera. Uh, there's some like just talking sections. People run all kinds of weird stuff. There's some ASMR stuff and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on on Twitch now. Uh, but we're using Twitch one because of the ease of use. So um, it's, it's actually pretty costly if you're trying to stream these things, setting up your own platform to stream these things yourself. Uh, pretty simple. Um, you know, pretty simple and easy to stream on. So that's number one Two, discoverability. Uh, so the goal with this is to just get as many people uh, invested in technology as possible, really give people the tools to learn this stuff. I think I, I truly believe that anyone who uh, wants to learn any type of technical engineering should have the ability to, you know, no matter no matter what. Um, so we're trying to pull money off of the table. We don't want people to have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to be able to learn tech. Um, and so this this I feel is a good way to share with as many people as possible. Um, three, the level of interactivity. So already you can see in the chat, 
Um, you know, you can speak to people, you can speak to each other. Um, I can speak to you. I can do polls. I can do all kinds of different things uh, to interact with you. And I, I think it's tough sometimes watching videos and by yourself and, you know, getting answers when you really need them. All that's kind of tough. Um, I think Twitch, uh, that the interactivity of Twitch really allows you to kind of expand uh, how rapidly people can learn and just the different things you can do. Like you'll see, we won't be using it tonight, but I'll be using an iPad as a whiteboard and some other things. This is just some cool stuff that broadcasting like this allows you to do. Um, and so, yeah. And again, also, um, there's Twitch is an Amazon company. So again, if you have, you do get some perks in Twitch. If you have Amazon Prime, um, there's some cool things that, that um, come out of that. There's some things that I can, uh, there will be some things that I can give to you. Um, there will be some streams that are for uh, subscribers only. <coughs> um, probably, honestly, probably most of the office hours. So Fridays I'll be doing uh, office hours and um, those will probably be um, subscriber only streams they'll be short uh, probably only an hour or so probably just be playing some games talking through some things let people ask whatever questions they want um so yeah so that's why we're on twitch um you know explore check it out i'm still learning a ton about twitch um but feel free to ask me any questions i'll try to answer them for you if you're unfamiliar with twitch or having trouble getting going with it um uh xca love the keyboard bills i i mean hey all my stuff most of my stuff just got in. I'm just waiting for my switches now. I'm going to build a new one. Um, you know, I'm going to swap out these uh, these keycaps, these mastermind colored keycaps uh, onto a new white aluminum um, tofu 60% keyboard. So, yeah, I'll, I'll keep I'll keep you guys. Uh, I'll keep you guys up to date on the keyboard builds as well as I get a little bit further with those. Uh, the Slack workspace. So I want everyone again. If you're new to Twitch, I want everyone to scroll a little bit below the video. This might be hard if you're on a cell phone. Um, I'm not really sure how it displays on a cell phone, but scroll below the video. You'll see a couple of panels with some information. The one that's most important right now is the chat commands panel. So there's a lot of ways for you to uh, get some self-service here. You can you can enter in some commands to get some information. So there's some things below. Check below to see if you... Um, if there's if, if any of the information you're looking for, check below and uh, try that out first before asking, um, just to kind of keep the chat as clear as possible. Tonight, no big deal. Go ahead and ask. But as we get further along, and you know we're diving into stuff, and people are having questions, specific questions about the stuff we're going over. That'll be the best way for you to uh, get the information you need. Let me know if any of the links are outdated because they might be outdated. Um, but the chat commands are just kind of an exclamation point. Um, you do an exclamation point in the name of the chat command. So things like. Um, YouTube, if you do exclamation point YouTube, that'll give you back information about YouTube channels or whatever. Um, so this is also good because this will give you more comfortable with just commands in general. And as we get to the Linux section and everything, uh, you'll, you'll you'll start to feel a little bit more comfortable. So that is uh, that's that for Twitch, I think. And again, you can check out the other panels below. Uh, not much information, not much more information there, um, but those chat commands are probably the most important of all the information below. All right. So who am I um, and why? Why are you here listening to me? Why am I doing this? Um, so there's just a little bit of information about me. My name is Aaron Brooks. <coughs> um, it's OK to call me A.A. Ron. If, if you haven't seen the Key and Peele skit, just go to YouTube and type in Key and Peele. Uh, I think it's Substitute Teacher. And you can see the skit. Everyone calls me A.A. Ron as they come across. Um, as they come across, they find out my name is Aaron. So it is okay. I do respond to it. No big deal. Uh, so I am a DevOps engineer. Um, so that is what I do in my daily job. I'm a DevOps engineer and technical lead um, with about eight years of industry experience. Um, I put the about there because, um, you know, you've, I've been messing around with tech for a while and some of the stuff is related. Some of the stuff's not related. So about eight years of industry of technical industry uh, experience. Um, I'm currently working at a company um, called fearless in Baltimore. Pretty dope company. You can check us out at fearless.tech. Um, that's probably going to change this year. More information about that as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool company, but that's what I currently do in my day job. Um, so I am a 90s baby. I was born in 90, you know, so I am the 90s baby. Um, and I think that's important for a couple of reasons. I think it's important because of the jokes that I'll make, uh, the, the things that I'll refer to. Last time I actually had um, the three main starting Pokemon off to my right on my wall, uh, which was Bulbasaur, you know, Venusaur. I mean, yeah, Bulbasaur, uh, Squirtle and um, Charmander. You know, Pokemon was my being born in 90. Pokemon was my life. You know, Pokemon taught me a lot of life lessons. Um, 
And so when I refer to certain things, I think it's important to know, you know, when I was born, put some context around, um, yeah, context around uh, the things that I'm saying, things that I'm doing. There's memes and and gifts everywhere, all around, all around the slides, all around what I'm going to be doing. And I think it's important, again, for you to know that so you can understand it. If you hate it, now you know why. I'm just, uh, I guess I'm a millennial, you know, and uh yeah, if it doesn't sit well with you, I'm sorry, um, but my goal is to make it as fun as possible and, uh, you know, talk about things that I like. So let me, uh, let me grab a little coffee real quick. All right. So I also love cars and motorsports um, that I watch F1. Um, I, I, I had a WRX that I just got rid of. Um, I had a WRX and a Fiesta ST. I got rid of the WRX for a number of reasons. Uh, one of them is I'm working on getting a truck and a trailer, uh, so that I can make a race, so I can build a race car. Um, that's the, that's the goal. You know, what, what's everyone's, some people's goal is to, you know, be able to take care of their family or get into tech, you know, to be able to take care of their family, to have a lot of money, to travel. I want to be able to have a truck trailer and a race car, and I want to be able to travel around uh racing so that is that is uh that's what i'm working on that's that's my motivation um so yeah so i love motorsports um and if you ever want to talk about it uh that would be cool did i cut out my dropping frames or is that just my internet here cool what kind of race car um let me know if anyone else is dropping frames just because i'm not dropping frames but my the thing that I'm using the monitor over here looks like it's buffering. I, I think it might be just because of the internet here. Um, but what kind of race car? So I, I've done enough to know that I don't want to go too crazy too fast. Uh, I really want to learn how to drive really well. I've done a couple of track days and things. Uh, I'll probably get like a, like I said, right now I have the Fiesta SC, which is really fun, um, but I want some real world drive. So I probably get, I'm a little too big for a Miata. Uh, so I might get like a BRZ or an FRS to start. Uh, and it'll be cheap to run. I need something that's relatively cheap to run for the time being. Um, and then after that, um, I'll try to move up to something like a Corvette or something. Um, you know, I, I like the the Camaro, like SS1 LE is pretty cool, um, which may give me a lot of things out of the box. I don't really have to build it, uh, but tires are going to be expensive because the wheels are big. But yeah, I, I love motorsports and I want to dive deeper into motorsports as I get older. Um, and as I, you know, can afford it, I want to dive a little bit deeper. Uh, do I like anime? So... You're buffering pretty bad on my side. Okay, let me um, let me see what I can do here. One second. Hold on. One sec. Oh no, no, no. Pancakes are always better than waffles. Yeah. Okay, any Hmm. Interesting. We should be good. Okay, sorry about that. 
right, I'm gonna keep an eye. Um, I'm gonna keep an eye. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. Super weird. All right. Um, if not, let me know if you guys are seeing black screen. Try refreshing. Um, definitely try refreshing. And I'll keep an eye. Actually, to I'll put this quality lower just so may have to lower it. Um, unfortunately, I do not have an Ethernet connection where I'm at currently. Um, it's on the way, but uh, it is Wi Fi, but Wi Fi is pretty darn good here. So cool. All right, we're gonna run through while it's working just, just to make sure everything's good. Um, make sure we don't miss anything. But back to someone asked me about anime. So, anime, I do like anime. Um, I only recently started really watching anime. Uh, one of the things I, I love, Attack on Titan, that's my favorite right now. Um, but I'm all caught up, just waiting for more of that. Um, I love things like Death Note was amazing. It was the best. Um, I really like uh, I really like stuff like that that makes you think. So that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so if you have any good animes, let me know. I'm, I'm definitely in to uh, watching some animes. I haven't watched Demon Slayer. I'll check it out though. People have told me about it. Um, I started watching... What's the? I just started watching. I watched Water Art Online. That was good. Um, I just started watching One Punch Man as well as My Hero Academia. So I'm running through those right now. But let me know if uh, if anything else is good. Um, cool. So cool. I'm also so besides motorsports, I am a gamer. Um, it says I only play Overwatch. I play Overwatch a lot, like way more than I should. Um, mostly because I, I just I'm a competitive person and there hasn't been a game in a while that has the same competitive aspect uh, that Overwatch has um, since Halo 2 honestly like ever since Call of Duty came out uh, you play and you get XP and you just if you get you get rewarded for just playing I like games that uh, when you are when you lose that it means something that something bad happens when you lose I like I like that like I like the the ch it's, it's so treacherous to like play the game and be afraid to play the game. And you want everyone on your team to do good because when you win, good things happen. And when you lose, bad things happen. I really like that. And Overwatch has been the first game in a long time uh, for, yeah, natural consequences uh, to make that happen. So I play a lot of Overwatch, but I also play like Gears of War. I'm about to play through the entire Gear series again. I love the Gears of War series. Um, I have not played through Gears 5. That's why I'm about to play through the whole thing again. Um, again, Halo. Halo's coming out for PC. Uh, Reach just came out for PC. So I'm playing that. Um, mostly shooters, but I play a lot of, uh, I, I do play games. I am a gamer. Uh, and so that's probably what we'll be doing on, um, on office hour Fridays. Um, I love watching movies. I uh, love watching movies. Horror is my favorite, even though I'm not someone who doesn't get scared at horror movies. I get pretty scared during horror movies. Um, but that's the fun of it. And I just started getting into podcasts or podcasts recently. Those are great. Uh, so I'm gonna listen to some horror audiobooks. Uh, the podcast I'm listening to right now is the Black Tapes, which I think is like the main horror podcast. And there's some other ones, uh, but I do love horror movies and horror things. Um, Android and Spotify over iOS, Apple Music. Um, I refuse to get caught up in the Apple ecosystem for a number of reasons, um, but I, I I am a I'm an Android person. I've, I've been there. I'm a Pixel user. Um, and Spotify, Spotify is OG Spotify over iOS and Apple Music. Pancakes over waffles always. Um, and dogs over cats. I do have a, I do have a Rottweiler. I have like a, she was 120 pounds last time we talked about her. She is 96 pounds. We just got her weighed. She's having some health problems right now, but she's a good girl. Um, maybe you'll see her. I'll probably bring her here a few times while I'm streaming. Um, so you probably hear her a few times. Um, cool. Uh, favorite Linux distro. So, okay. First, who's my main for Overwatch? My main for Overwatch. Uh, is I'm, so I'm a tank player. Um, I love Hammond when he makes sense. T he's my main when it makes sense. Uh, besides that, Arissa is always the go-to. So Arissa and Hammond are who I play the most. I have a second account now uh, because I really want to get my DPS chops up. Whoops. Um, but I wanted to get my DPS chops up. So I'm playing a lot of uh, Ash as well as um, as well as McCree. Um, trying to get my trying to get my hit scan up. Um, trying to get good at some of that stuff. Um, favorite Linux distro. So my favorite Linux distro is the one that I'm using now, which is Pop OS, which is basically um, a reskin to Ubuntu. A company called System76 makes some Linux laptops. This is one of their laptops. Um, and 
I use it. it it's, it's a really good laptop. If you don't, for anyone who's messed with Linux, you can know how much of a hassle it is to stick it on your own laptop. And um, yeah, so I use their distro. It's really good. It has some cool features for being able to update their hardware and things like that. Uh, runs pretty smooth, looks good. Uh, it's very fast. So that is what I use. You'll, 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 we'll talk about that a lot, a, a whole lot more. Um, coherence, amazing thriller horror flick. I'll check it out. I'll, I'm gonna write that down now. Uh, you put your dog on the keto diet. Nah, I didn't put my dog on the keto diet. Just we bought her some expensive diet food that they put her on. Um, and then she just also just like we gave her less of it. So we weren't filling up her bowl. We we're giving her the proper amounts and she lost weight pretty quick. Uh, ZSH or good old Bash. Now, oh man, we're gonna talk about this heavily. I feel very strongly about ZSH versus Bash. Uh, I'm in the Bash camp. ZSH is currently what's running right now because I wanted to give it the old American try. Um, and I have some gripes about ZSH. We'll talk about that a lot. Um, but I am using ZSH. You will see me using ZSH here. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, these are Linux shells. Um, these are interpreters here. So I am, you know, it's it's pretty. Uh, it's very pretty here. But um, I prefer, I much prefer Bash um, for, again, a number of reasons. We'll talk about that. Um, we'll probably talk about that tonight. Uh, which 76 uh, system 76 laptop is it? It is the Galago Pro, the 14 inch model. Um, it's got an i7, 16 gigs of RAM, like an NVMe SSD, like 512 gigs. So it's a it's a pretty powerful ultrabook. Uh, works super well for a lot of things that I do. I uh, love it for programming. Love it for a bunch of stuff. Um, Deep Rock Galactic built. I yes, I, I checked it out. Um, if I get some time, I might I might do that. Um, I don't know what happened to angry Mohawk, but, um, yeah, maybe I'll pick up, maybe I'll pick up, maybe we'll play that game on a Friday. Um, bash all day. Can't type. Okay. Core boot. Um, so I do not have a core boot model. I've had this for a couple years. Um, they, they have released their laptops. This one, uh, the Galago pro, as well as the darter they've released with core boot, uh, which is an open source, uh, bootloader, but this one does not have it, um, at all. Cool. Uh, yeah, let's move on. So communication, how, uh, how can you can communicate with me? How can you find out information about what's going on with the stream? How can you get in touch with me? Um, on all social media, my handle is mastermind IO. So remember that, remember the IO on the end is no I in mastermind. So mastermind IO is how you find me. Twitter is probably the best place. LinkedIn is really good. And, um, Instagram is probably the least best place. I do have a Facebook as well, but I don't really like using it. Um, you can get the schedule here, DevOps schedule. It'll link you to the Gmail, the Gmail schedule, or yeah, the Google schedule for that. Uh, Slack is a great place. Um, and my email is abrooks at mastermind.io. So if anything happens, uh, if I get sick, uh, if there's any, for any reason we have to postpone anything, I will shout that out on, um, on social media, on probably all the social media channels, as well as the Slack. So keep an eye out for those. Um, I don't anticipate anything happening, but you know, <laughs> life comes at you fast. I'm a little bit, sick. I'm getting over some sickness right now. So excuse my coughing, I'm sorry about that. Um, but I don't anticipate uh, anything keeping me away, but if it does, the re the makeup dates, we're gonna be using Fridays as the makeup dates for things. And again, understand if you don't wanna use your Fridays to watch this stuff, it will be recorded so that you can watch it later, but we will be using Fridays for any makeups that need to happen. Uh, yeah, so reach out to me on any of those methods uh, if you need to reach me. All right, so this is a bootcamp. Um, and you know, everyone feels certain ways about bootcamps. But uh, here's what I want you to take away. I wanna set some realistic expectations about what this is gonna be, uh, what you're gonna get out of it, what you're gonna take away. <clears throat> so the first thing is at the end of this, I want you to have a very strong understanding of DevOps, uh, DevOps concepts, and DevOps as a culture, the culture of DevOps. So I want you to have a very strong understanding of all of those things. If you understand those things, I take that as a success. Um, the, like I want you to be able to really in depth, uh, have a conversation about DevOps, its principles, uh, the culture of DevOps implementation of DevOps at the end of this. Um, so you'll learn tonight that DevOps is a culture. It's, it's a, it's a ethos, a method of operation rather than a job title or, or kind of a way you do things. So we'll talk about that tonight. I want you to know where DevOps fits into the tech industry. So we've got software engineers, so we've got UX, UI, we've got, uh, scrum masters, we got project managers, we got all these different things. 
But I want you to understand how DevOps fits into the to the to the entirety of it, how it fits in the tech industry. Uh, I want you to understand how to implement DevOps methodologies to solve real, real world problems. So we'll try to contextualize everything that we do, uh, all the tools and things that we learn that enable DevOps. We'll try to tie that those things together uh, so that you can understand, you know, how to use those things and how to implement those things to solve real world problems. So that's the goal here. We will pay you a lot of money so that you can solve problems. Um, I want you to have a solid understanding of the role and the requirements of a DevOps engineer. So uh, this is going to be a little bit vague. Um, <coughs> this is different everywhere you go, but I do want you to understand kind of the umbrella of what a DevOps engineer would have to do, um, those roles and requirements. And then I want you to be able to see and understand a path to be to entering the, the field of DevOps. Like, you know, if you're on the outside trying to get in, if you're not in tech at all, I want you to kind of be able to see the path and understand the path that you need to take to get there. Uh, so that you can call yourself a DevOps engineer, so that you can participate in this in this uh, in this field. Those are the primary things that I want you to take away from this. So again, focus on those things. Those are the primary things. Secondary. So there's some things that aren't quite as important, but things I still want you to take away from this. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, we having some more video issues. Looks looks good on my end. Hopefully, I try giving it a refresh. Um, we did have some issues a little bit ago, so try refreshing and let me know if, um, can do it. Uh, is there any way to publish the calendar along, uh, uh, publicly? I will work on that. Um, generally not a Google Cloud user. Never thought about that. Um, you can get the dates from academy.mastermind.io, but I will work on, I will work on publishing it uh, outside of that. Um, I never even thought about that. So thank you. I'll try to work on getting that set uh, this week to get that set up. Um, there's no way right now, but I'll, I'll try to get it set up for you. Cool. Uh, but the secondary things, we talk about the primary, secondary things, an understanding of how to approach learning new concepts and technologies. So this is the base of everything in the tech industry. And you'll, you'll pick this up, like you have to pick this up to be in the tech industry. Hopefully you can learn a lot of it from this boot camp. I want you to understand how to approach learning new things, uh, learning new technologies, um, and get comfortable doing that. This is, I almost want to put this one in triple stars, super duper bold, but I want you to be at peace and being confused or lost. Uh, it is okay for you to be confused and lost. You will often be confused and lost in the tech industry while you're working on things. Um, but it takes a while to get there, but I want you to be at peace in that confusion. I want you to be at peace being lost. I hope that I can arm you with the tools to help you find the answers or, or, or know how to find the answers as we go along. Again, it's okay, remember this, I'll, I'll harp on this the whole time. It's okay if you're lost, it is completely okay. Own it, uh, uh, we, can, we can figure out why you're lost and there's a lot of learning that comes out of being lost and trying to find your way back onto the path. So don't don't stress over it, you will be, you will be confused and lost a lot. <clears throat> I want you to have a realization that nobody knows it all. Uh, this is one of the biggest problems. This is one of the things that that leads to imposter syndrome. I have a video on imposter syndrome, but um, I want you like nobody knows it all. Uh, most people know just enough to do their job, um, and the quicker you get to learn that, the the better you'll feel about yourself. The easier it'll be to be to dive deeper into DevOps and what DevOps is into tech, um, knowing that no one knows it all. So I want you to to know that as well. Uh, a strong belief that tech is for you and that you can thrive in it. So. This is probably the biggest goal of Mastermind Academy. It's secondary here because this is specifically the DevOps Bootcamp, but I want you to believe that the tech industry is for you, that you can get in, that you can do it, because you can. Um, it, it's it's very, it's, the the equation is simple. It's, it's like working out, it's like losing weight. Everyone knows what you need to do to lose weight. Uh, they know if you, you eat right, for the most part, if you eat right and you work out, You'll 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 lose the weight that you want to lose, uh, but it's it's something that's still hard to do. And getting into tech is very similar. The equation's easy. Uh, there are jobs that there are jobs for us. There are jobs for everyone. There's over seven hundred thousand unfilled tech jobs in the U.S. right now. Um, over seven hundred thousand unfilled tech jobs in the U.S. It's it's very difficult to hire for a lot of these positions, uh, just because of the skills gap that we have. And if you take the time and you're disciplined and you you just 
you take the time to learn the stuff. Just take your time, uh, get familiar with it, get comfortable with it, start picking up the skills. Uh, the same way that you know how to lose weight, this is the same way that you get the tech industry. It's almost a guaranteed thing. If you spend the time, spend the energy, you'll get in, uh, and you'll you know you'll make all the money that you want to make um, here. But I want you to believe that you can do it and that you can thrive in it. And the last thing, which you need as a, one of the most important pieces of the tech industry, is you need to have proper dope meme usage. Um, you got to be able to use memes properly in the Slack. You should be using them everywhere. You should be using them. They're a great way to express your feelings, a great way to uh, to lighten the mood, uh, to keep everything light uh, as you're learning. So that is that is one last thing that I want you to 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 get in here. Um, what amount of time investment are we looking at? That should be. On the next slide, okay, yeah, yeah. Part of it is coming up in the slides now. It's a great question. What the what the time expectation is? It's coming up now. So you expect what you expect to see. Uh, you see what you expect to see. Severus quote from uh, Harry Potter. So what do I expect to see? Um, so I expect to see active engagement. Um, I think it's important. You will get out of this what you put into it, and. I think for something as as broad and, and as uh, complicated as DevOps, you need to be actively engaged. Uh, help each other out. Uh, hop into the Slack. Uh, hop out in social media. Ask questions. Do you know? You need to be actively engaged in what you're doing um, to to get to the end of this. Uh, to get a lot out of it. So uh, I expect to see active engagement. Uh, ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions. Again, that's part of the active engagement. All these kind of support active engagement, but. Ask questions. It is completely okay. I may not answer them immediately in the chat. Someone probably will. If they do not get answered during the stream, make sure you keep it. Make sure you ask it in the Slack channel. There will be a questions Slack channel where uh, we put all the questions that we need to get answered, and we'll get the we'll get those questions answered in the Slack channel if they're not answered during stream. But ask questions. Keep asking questions. Answer questions. So as you pick up things, like don't feel like you're too junior. Don't think. Don't think anything like no one knows, you know, your level of your, your skill level. If you know the answer to a question or if you think you have it, an answer, answer it and tell people if you're not sure, say, hey, you know, I was, I was learning this the other day. I read this the other day and I think that this may be the answer to it. No, share, share everything that, you know, um, and help people as they're as they're asking questions in the in the chat as well. Uh, check out all the supplied resources each week. So, again, this is for the people who are subscribed. The Google Classroom will have resources check them all out I, I know sometimes it can be a lot check out all the supplied resources do your best to go through all of them uh to get all the information because all of it is not directly related to exactly what we're doing this week it's it's some of it's tangential but it will really help you out in the future um okay this is where the time question came in i want you, i want you to spend at least five hours per week learning outside of the boot camp so things that we're going over you know do do your own research on them watch a couple youtube videos uh i may not teach something to you the best your learning style may not gel with the way that i'm teaching something do your own research on it watch read some articles about a topic uh spend some time practicing and learning and again i'll do my best to give you the resources to be able to go do those things but i expect at least five hours per week um, outside of this for you to get the most out of it and again as much as many hours as you can put into it i would like but outside of here an additional five hours per week which is not a crazy ask uh that's a, that's if you're watching the stream for two days that's an hour each other day um so you really should be putting more time but i think five hours will give you a lot here uh, and then i want to see some affirmations of progress so even tonight you know I want you, I, I want to see how people are progressing. I want to see when, what people are working on. I want to see when people are studying. So if you can use the hashtag mastermind, I'll be able to find your post on all social media platforms. Uh, like again, take, take a picture of, you know, you watching the stream, take a picture of you when you're studying or, or tweet out some information, uh, that, that you just learned. Um, I want to see some, I like to see people progressing in this stuff. Uh, so use the hashtag mastermind and, um, you know, let, let me and others see how you're doing and what you're working on. Uh, we're really, I'm really trying to create a community here. I really want you guys to take this by the horns and take this over and and really make this into a community. So, um, so that's a that's a good way for you guys to share what you. Uh, I'm not trying to miss more than two days in a row without doing training for IT topics. Are you planning another tech panel at the end uh, during the session? Yes, there will be a, there will be a there will be a panel. I'm actually trying to incorporate. Another one. people like that one a lot, and I do think it was very valuable. Um, I'm actually going to try to do a squeeze another one in, uh, but right now, that the one that we had last time where you can ask, you know, the engineering ask me anything panel, you can hop in and you can um, 
we will definitely be doing that probably with a we'll probably i'll see if terrence wants to come back because people seem to really like terrence but we'll probably get a new uh set of people just so we can get a different perspective on the things that we're going to be talking about um gotta get better gotta get a better connection hopefully um i actually might need to turn down some of the settings um i think because again i have a whole new setup here so i may need to turn down the 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 bit rate and all the stuff that I'm doing. Maybe I need to stream at a lower bit rate. Um, I'll figure that out in a second. Um, probably next tonight I'll, I'll change some settings and I'll do some test streams and we'll try to make sure we can get the streams a little better for everyone. Uh, Phoenix project DevOps handbook are decent resources. In my opinion, I agree. Uh, we can post some links for those. Uh, I definitely agree. Phoenix project is very good. It'll make a little more sense as we dive deeper into the course, but it's something that I do think people, if you have time that you should read. So cool, we talked about expectations. Uh, let's hop into the roadmap um, and the curriculum because both of these things are super important. So let's talk about what we're gonna be learning. Um, <coughs> sorry about that. Um, so first things first, roadmap.sh. So this is a good website and I don't know if I can copy and paste between the two computers, but I can, if you wanna follow along here. But this is a website, uh, it's an open source project, uh, really great, it offers some development roadmaps, developer roadmaps for front end, back end, and DevOps. Um, I think they're very interesting. I don't think I don't think any of them are perfect, but I do think they are pretty good. But we will be following a lot of this roadmap here. It's a little bit bigger, let me go back here so I can monitor. All right, so we will be following this, um, following along here. So I want you to focus on the big things in the middle, um, the, the the things that are numbered with the purple numbers, because those are the, the topics that we're gonna be trying to hit. Uh, DevOps, again, is a methodology that's fueled, it's a way of doing things that's kind of fueled uh, by tech, that's enabled by tools, uh, enabled by technology. So a lot of things on the outside here are just the tools that you can use for this. But yeah, so first, we're going to be learning a programming language. I don't, I don't think we're following this exactly, uh, but we will be learning a programming language first. We're going to be learning Golang. Well, Go. It's called Go. It's not called Golang. But commonly, when you're searching and things, you have to type in Golang because the word Go, you know, is a pretty common word. Uh, so we're going to be choosing Go. Uh, if you're interested in learning Python, again, we're running a whole boot camp on Python. So you can watch Python. Again, the concepts are going to be important here, not necessarily the language. So uh, we'll talk about why we're gonna be learning Go, but that's what we're gonna be doing first. Uh, operating systems concept. So we need to learn uh, operating system concepts. As a DevOps engineer, you'll be managing systems, you'll be managing servers, uh, maybe, maybe you'll be managing servers. Um, but yeah, you need to kind of understand some of these things like uh, IO management and virtualization and, and file systems and things like that. So we'll be going over a lot of those things. Again, using Linux, Linux is the dominant operating system of the world. Uh, especially for stuff like this. So we'll be going, we'll be using Linux and going over a lot of the stuff. That's another reason why I'm using Linux as a distro for this. I know a lot of you are running Mac or Windows, but um, working off of Linux makes things a little bit easier when we're doing some of this stuff. Um, server management, again, you may not be managing servers. Uh, I actually, there's a whole serverless movement now and you may be using some, using some kind of managed platform like EKS or some Kubernetes thing. Uh, but we'll, we'll need to understand how to manage servers and it'll be very important. So we'll learn how to do some server management. Uh, we'll do this uh, mostly inside of AWS as well. Um, and yeah, we'll learn a lot about the terminal. Uh, networking and security, we'll spend some time in that so that you can learn, you know, how things, how networking works and security and a lot of those aspects of, of things. Um, a lot of this is eased by the cloud. So you'll be usually doing a lot of work in the cloud and the cloud kind of makes a lot of this easy for you, but we'll be talking about a lot of that stuff. Um, we'll talk about setting up web servers and firewalls and proxies, um, cause that'll be important. Uh, infrastructure is code. This is the fun one. This is when we'll hop into Ansible and Terraform and we'll talk about containers with Docker. Uh, so we'll be using Docker here and Ansible and we'll definitely get into container orchestration with Kubernetes and Terraform. So infrastructure is code. What does that mean? Now, again, I said I said DevOps is, is a methodology that's enabled by tooling. Um, the way things are developed uh, now, instead of manually having to configure things, you can uh, define the state of something uh, and using using code, so it's not all it's not all code. It's but these are files uh, that describe the state of an application or the state of infrastructure, and you can deploy those things, and it will set them up accordingly. 
Uh, then we'll do CICD. So CICD is continuous integration and continuous delivery. Again, we'll dive way deeper into all this stuff. Uh, just kind of high level going over stuff right now. Uh, super important in DevOps, uh, setting up these developer pipelines um, are gonna be the goal of a lot of DevOps engineering positions. So that'll be cool. We, we'll be using uh, Circle CI for this. I'm glad he updated this to make Circle CI one of the dominant items on here. Jenkins is probably the most popular, but uh, we're not using Jenkins. Um, yeah, and then cloud provider. So cloud providers actually comes, I think, second right after the operating system stuff. But we'll be using AWS to dive into the cloud. I think we're doing two full weeks of cloud, two or three weeks of cloud. So yeah, so it's a lot there. There's a lot of stuff in here uh, for DevOps again. This DevOps Bootcamp, there actually will be a more advanced DevOps Bootcamp. This one's introductory. So this will be, we'll be touching each of these concepts. High level, we'll, be, we'll actually be doing something with them, um, but we won't dive crazy deep into almost any of them. Uh, we'll, we'll get deep enough for you to be able to play around and to get you really going with it. Um, but we'll, we'll definitely dive deeper in, in a more advanced course uh, after this. I'm actually trying to set up some workshops. We'll be doing, definitely be doing a Docker workshop and a Kubernetes workshop, which may be like two or three weeks. Um, I'll give you dates for that um, as I as I solidify them. But a lot of this stuff we'll go deeper into. Um, and I'm actually setting up an entire cloud bootcamp now, a full 12 weeks of AWS because uh, it it takes that much time to really get going um, on everything that AWS has to offer. So yeah, so that's the roadmap. Um, and you'll see that that looks very similar to uh, academy.mastermind.io. This is where the curriculums lie. Um, and so you can take a look at the curriculum. Here are the dates for everything. Make this a little bit bigger. Um, and you can see, we'll dive into programming language first. So we'll start that on Wednesday. Um, actually, man, I actually, all of these dates are off because I never put syllabus day, which is today. Today's actually syllabus day and not introduction to programming. I'm very sorry about that. Um, so all these dates are gonna be off by one. I, I knew something weird was in here because the dates were off the first time I ran it through. I'll fix it, uh, I'll, I'll figure out where the where the error is. Um, but tonight's all about DevOps, we'll learn about what DevOps is, but, oh no, never mind. I, man, I'm tripping. No, that is on there, the dates are correct. I am, I need to go to sleep. But um, yes, so we'll learn about a programming language first that'll start on Wednesday, uh, on Tuesday, sorry, on Tuesday. And we'll run through, we'll learn uh, a little bit about Go, that'll run through the end of next week. Then we'll hop into uh, OS management. So we'll hop into Linux, we'll start learning some Linux and how to manage Linux and understanding processes and things like that. Uh, we'll spend some time there. Uh, then we'll hop into networking and security, uh, web servers, uh, we'll do a lab. We'll kind of combine it all. We'll do some, uh, some scripting, some bash scripting, and we'll solve some problems uh, with that. Uh, then we'll hop into the cloud, infrastructure as code, um, containers, pretty important. Um, Kubernetes, uh, CICD, monitoring, and then we'll hear from, we'll have our panel, which people liked. Uh, and then we'll talk about the DevOps interview process. So tons of stuff. If you haven't gone through the curriculum, again, go ahead to the website, look through the curriculum, uh, get get familiar with it so that you know when we're hitting certain things. If you already know the stuff, you know, understand, feel free to skip the parts that you really know if you're just trying to pick up some information elsewhere. But hopefully I can fill in some gaps in each of these things. Um, yeah. All right, let's let me hop back in the chat. I've been ignoring the chat. Um, Phoenix Project, thanks for posting the the, the SRE book there. Um, what's the difference between software engineers and DevOps engineers? Great question. And I might hold that until we're, right, we're ne the next thing we're doing in the next like two seconds is we're about to start talking about what DevOps is. So I might hold that question for then. Uh, Ansible, I guess, uh, Angry Mohawk, what's your question about Ansible? We will be learning. We'll be using Ansible for our configuration management section. Um, awesome. Golang is awesome. Yes, I love Go. Um, I love teaching Go as well. I, I run some, So if you're in the Baltimore area or DC area, uh, I run some GoBridge uh, workshops and I will help run some GoBridge workshops in the area. So I'll send out information when those are coming up. Uh, but to teach people Go is free. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll give some more information on that. Um, super excited about Go. How proficient do we have to be in Go on programming languages? So that is an excellent question. Um, I know DevOps engineers who don't know how to code at all, who can just do some bash scripting. I guess that's coding, but uh, there there are some jobs that want you to be a systems administrator, really, uh, do some automation as a systems administrator. Uh, and there are some that you're basically a software engineer who knows stuff about infrastructure. Um, so. 
you don't I don't think you need to be amazing, an amazing developer in any language to do DevOps. Uh, I think it helps. I think the, the better you are, um, the more it helps. But um, I think uh, being able to use a language just enough to like knowing the tools, knowing what you can do with the language and knowing the tools and being able to understanding how to use it to be able to uh, solve problems. Um, you know, I don't think it takes that long. Um, it's hard to it's hard to say exactly how proficient you need to be, but um, it's not. You don't. I don't think you need to have a super high level of proficiency um, to do DevOps. But the more proficient you are, the more it helps. You sound enthusiastic about Jenkins. Yes, I enthusiastically hate Jenkins. It is a great. It is. A, it is a great product. Um, but anyone who's used it uh, for years uh, has their qualms with it for sure. Uh, CLI or AWS Tower, all CLI, yes, um, all, just about all CLI for Ansible. Uh, most things we'll be doing will be CLI based. Um, when we get to the AWS section, um, we'll do a lot of stuff in the console just to, you know, to not scare everyone off, but um, we'll do a lot of stuff from the command line as well. GoBridge, GoBridge is super dope. Um, it's Go similar to any other language, Go similar to uh, maybe like it's Java esque, C plus plus esque, uh, to compile language. Um, but it's also like as the readability of like Python. Um, it's, it's really readable, um, really fast. Uh, so it's, it's it's interesting. I have a little chart for that as well. Uh, I have a company pretty compared to a monitor C plus plus. Yep, C plus plus. Uh, depends on where you work. Yes. I use Ansible to trigger bash scripts all the time. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, is Go object oriented? Uh, no. Well, it's tough. It's a tough question. You can use uh, you can use its structs to to uh, to work with it as it's, as if it's an object oriented language, but it is not inherently an object oriented language. I don't think. I'm pretty sure it's not. Um, yeah, by default. Uh, but you can. It has some paradigms uh, to help you work with it uh, in that way if you'd like. But cool, let's hop into DevOps, the things that you care about the most. Uh, you care about what DevOps is, that's why you're here. So tonight, we're gonna learn about what DevOps is, and we're gonna have some cool discussions about what it is and what it's not. And again, you're, we've been talking about a lot, we've been talking for an entire hour, but uh, yeah, let's talk about what DevOps really is. So what the heck is DevOps? Automate all the things. Um, yeah, so what is DevOps? According to Wikipedia, we're gonna talk about the Wikipedia definition first. So DevOps is a clipped compound of the word development and operations, if you didn't already know. So they took, they took development, they took operations, they chopped them up, slapped them together. It's a software development methodology. So keep that in mind, methodology that combines software development, that's the dev, and information technology operations, which is ops. That means nothing. Um, you probably heard that definition, probably read it before, and it's a trash definition. It's a garbage definition, um, what it is. So <clears throat> what's a better version? So anyone who, um, anyone in the DevOps scene, uh, especially in the Maryland DC area, probably knows who Nathan Harvey is. Uh, he used to work at Chef. I think he's with Google Cloud now. Um, but in the, in the DevOps uh, Kung Fu thing that they put out with Chef, uh, he says DevOps is a cultural, so I highlighted cultural, cultural and professional movement focused on how we build and operate high velocity organizations. This is the key word right here, born from the experiences of its practitioners. That that last piece is very important. Probably should put it in bold. So DevOps is a cultural and professional movement focused on how we build and operate high velocity organizations born from the experiences of its practitioners. You can see right there that that has nothing to do with, uh, with tools or what you're gonna be doing on the job. It's a movement, it's a culture. Uh, it's a way you do things um, focused on being able to, on how we build and operate high velocity, so fast moving organizations that is born from the experiences of its practitioners. Very, very, very important right there. This is a great definition. All right, we're gonna dive deeper into that definition a little bit later on. So, breaking down silos. So, um, Everyone talks about the silos and the goal of, that the goal of DevOps is to break down silos. What are these imaginary silos? So this image is of how development still is at, at most places, um, still, still is a lot of places, but yes, this is how it is. So the business, 
the organization you work for, the company that you work for, they have uh, they have ideas of, of what they want to build. Uh, and they work to they work and they create these requirements up here. And they do it kind of in a bubble. They say, hey, we need these things built. We need a portal. We need this built uh, because it'll serve our customers. And they do it in a bubble over here. They do it in a silo. They do it blocked off from everyone else. And once they do that, they throw the requirements over this proverbial wall. So the wall is not really, not really real, um, but they throw the requirements over the wall to development. So requirements go over, uh, development takes those requirements and in their own bubble, they try to work on these requirements. And, you know, without talking to the business side of things, without talking to operations, they go ahead and build out these features, build out these things without truly understanding, you know, uh, some of the caveats on the operation side, uh, some of the changes that may need to happen on the business side, not truly understanding what the business really needs. Uh, and they take that stuff, they build it and they toss it over the other proverbial wall. So they're working in their own silo uh, and they toss it over the wall to operations. Operations has no idea how it works. They don't know what's going on. They just go ahead and deploy the thing that was passed to them. If it works great, if not, they pass it back. And there's not a lot of communication here um, at all. Uh, and so things get tossed over the wall and the responsibility gets thrown over without anyone in here really having a lot of communication um, or, or shared understanding of what you're trying to achieve. So we'll talk about Agile a bit here, but Agile solves this first piece uh, between business and development and DevOps is designed to solve the section between development and operations. Uh, so it's really trying to break down this wall that's right here so that development is not passing code over to operations and operations, you know, does whatever they want with it. It's designed to uh, operate within between the two of these uh, and really help uh, set up communication and set up uh, workflows that help uh, development and operations really coexist um, and be able to move a lot faster. So what are the issues with the old way? So this, this, this old way, you know, you may not understand why it's a problem. Um, what are some issues with it? So one is long release and feedback cycle. So because everything gets thrown over the wall and no one knows what's going on, it takes time to like get feedback and release things. So this gets tossed over and, uh, the business side of things can't really see anything until everything gets over into the operation side of things and it's actually deployed and it may take time for issues to crop up and things to get thrown back uh, once they're found and it's it's a really it's it's a, it's a really chaotic way of software development uh, developing software um, yeah, it call, it, it's very slow. Uh, again, the feedback cycle is slow. So you don't know things are broken for a while. Uh, getting information on changes and things like that takes a while. Uh, long mean time to fix. Again, uh, when things do happen, it takes a long time. Uh, the average time for fixing bugs and things like that takes a while. And a lot of that has to do, again, with the slow feedback cycle. Uh, you're reactive to production to production issues. So rather than getting ahead of things that may be happening, uh, you kind of have to react to things as they happen, which kind of sucks. Um, few or no people understand the entire SDLC implementation. What does SDLC stand for? So SDLC stands for the Software Development Lifecycle. We'll talk about that some more too, but few or no people understand the entire Software Development Lifecycle implementation. So this is the in this whole image is the entire software development lifecycle from inception to deployment uh you know the ideas are brought up over here and then they're they're developed out in the requirements they're built uh and they're they are packaged up and released <coughs> no one in a, in a situation like this in the old way no one really understands this entire thing no one knows what's going on across the board um and that can be very problematic um, and then it, it creates an adversarial IT environment. So when there are walls, when we're different teams, when there's operations in development, you pass something over to operations whose job it is to just keep things stable and steady and things break. Uh, they like to blame developers and developers like to say, nope, that's operations problem. It works over here. It works on my machine. Uh, you guys don't have the infrastructure set up to be able to serve our clients. Uh, and it, again, it creates this very adversarial um, thing because you're not all in it together. You all have your own pieces. You're all the arbiters of your own section and you like to pass the blame to other people. Um, yeah. And so th those are the issues with the old way. This is how DevOps attempts to solve these things. Um, what it really tries to do is set up these pro set up process pipelines and feedback loops. So um, you can see here, this is an infinity thing and it's really hard to know where to start, but we're going to start right here at plan. Um, and so, you know, 
This is the first part when you're trying to gather the requirements and figure out what, what really needs to happen. You know, figure out, figuring out what really needs to be built, figuring out what features are really going to be beneficial to the users. Uh, then you code those things, you build them, you test them, you release them, you deploy them. Uh, it, it runs out in production, you get information, so you monitor, you get information and you get feedback on those things and that feeds back in to your planning cycle. So issues that you found are able to be fed back into the planning cycle so that you can um, address those things um, and, and, and work with those things accordingly. And so the goal of DevOps is to make that feedback loop short. So instead of waiting weeks or months to find out about issues, to find out if things work, to find out if people like the stuff that you're doing, we, we really try to cut that down in DevOps to be able to get a uh, very fast information back about what's going on so that we can pivot and so that we can move, uh, move accordingly, move faster um, and get out what people really want and what people really need. So yeah, so that was a lot. Let's take a break there. Let's answer some questions. Um, but yes, the goal, again, the end goal is to break down these walls and to be able to create uh, some, some cohesiveness between really the business all the way to operations and to be able to set up processes and pipelines uh, so that the software development lifecycle, uh, one, everyone has a shared understanding of it and a shared um, responsibility of it um, so that you can deploy code faster, um, to be able to deploy code a lot faster. That'll make more sense as we get into things as well. Um, they are seldom based in reality. Over why go was created that's, that's dope i'm not sure what this is in terms to is, is be more a big tech hub um is becoming bigger um there are some companies here like you know like under armor uh there's there's a big there's a few big companies here um but it's definitely becoming bigger and bigger um as people are moving farther from dc so dc is becoming a bigger and bigger tech hub super expensive there a lot of companies are coming this way um tech is growing again um we're, the, the company I work for, Fearless, is a software shop. Uh, a little over 100 people now, or right at 100 people. Uh, but yeah, there, there is some, there's definitely tech here. Uh, there's definitely a good amount of tech here. I wouldn't call it a big tech hub, but I think it's it's moving towards that way. Um, the cost, 10X, like we're paying for you. Understanding, the wall is a lack of business understanding. Yeah, of development, absolutely, the business really has trouble understanding development and what, what goes in that, what's possible. Um, and development oftentimes really doesn't understand the business needs, uh, which is a problem. You know, the, the more the more development, the more the dev side of things can understand what the the goals of the business are, what the uh, the, the better they can help, to be honest. Um, it's been it's been pretty interesting being on the project that I'm on now and really getting to be a part of all that to really understand what the business really needs uh, and, and to be able to work with them from uh, the development side of things to really create solutions that will uh, be beneficial for them and for the users uh, has been pretty great. Um, Alex Stan, thank you for the prime sub. Welcome to the family. Um, I really like this bouquet and cost up. Awesome. I really like that. I appreciate that. The kind words there. We're doing this. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So any tips on getting buy-in from coworkers that aren't seeing the value in DevOps process? Is it simply to show them? Uh, I feel like there's friction in trying to change existing business process processes to help them understand the benefits of DevOps process. Yes. Um, showing people is, I think, one of the best ways, especially in a business that's uh, av adversarial or, or people who are, you know, really against the DevOps concepts, it is, it's a big change. Uh, and I, I definitely understand how it's, I understand why people fight it. Um, it's, again, it's it's almost like a fake thing. Like it's not a, it's not a super tangible thing. Like it's, it's a methodology um, and it's a practice and trying to get people to do things differently can be tough. Uh, but so I worked, I worked for the Better Business Bureau for a while. And one of the things that we did, we were, we were kind of, uh, you know, herding cattle with our servers and we had, you know, uh, it wasn't a ton of servers, but I think they were in the teens. But we were doing deployments by hand on each of these servers. Um, and one day, you know, I was, I was sitting in, I, I learned Puppet. Like, I was like, oh, like, you know, I might be trying to get a new job in the next year or so. Let me start learning some of these tools. And I dove into Puppet. And once I saw what you could do with a configuration management tool, and, you know, I had to show them. Like, I, I literally had to write, um, I, I had to write Puppet um, code for 
all the servers and I like, I literally turned our whole infrastructure into code in the matter of maybe, I think it took me like half a month uh, to be able to do or to get most of the stuff going. And like once I, once I kicked it off once and showed them like how I can config, configure uh, or deploy to multiple servers at once um, without having to really do anything, um, they were like, hmm, yep, that's it. We need to start doing something like that. So I think, I, I do think showing people is the way. It's really hard to get people to understand with words uh, why DevOps is important to them. Uh, yeah, it, it can be it can be pretty tough. But as someone who comes from a, I come from a systems administration background, DevOps methodologies are there, there I, for a vast majority of projects and organizations, it's the way it, it is. It's very, it's very beneficial. It can be very beneficial. I'm not saying it's perfect. Uh, and it's really hard to implement properly, but um, it is very much worth it. It will allow you to move super rapidly. I mean, I worked at places where we didn't, we, we did like a deployment per month and the project that I'm on now, we, we do deploy, we do, we can do as many deployments as we want per day, um, but we, we do, you know, 10, we've done, there's been days where we did 10 deployments and you know, we, we got some feedback and we were able to modify code and test it and push it through environments and get it deployed, you know, in the matter of minutes. So um, I, I really am someone who's subscribed to the DevOps, uh, DevOps methodologies and concepts. Uh, so it's a digital agency. Yes, it is a digital services agency uh, here in Baltimore. We mainly do uh, business with the federal government, uh, really trying to change the way the government does things. I actually used to, I actually vowed to never work for the government again or, or work as a government contractor just because of how slow um, the government moves and how adverse they are to change. But that's changing. They have some internal things going on. They have the digital services. I mean, um, they have, um, man, uh, they have the digital. There's an organization inside. I don't know why I'm blanking right now. There, There's a there's an organization within the government um, that um, it's kind of fostering uh, this change with the government and kind of helping people in the, in the government um, change and get better and ex and start to um, take in this new technology. And because of that, a lot of a lot of companies like Fearless have been able to come in and you know hop onto that and to be able to help you know organizations really make big changes within their uh, within their agencies. So it's kind of fun, you know. Like I, so, I work for I work on a project with the Small Business Administration. I am now a small business owner, so it's very interesting. Sometimes I'll be looking for information and I'll hit the site that I work on every day, um, and it's pretty cool. It actually it's put some some context around the work that you're doing and how it impacts people, um, and it's been it's been pretty cool to see. Uh, would you say that DevOps is the new systems administration of the future? Uh, and how do you make the pivot into full-fledged DevOps? Yes. Um, a lot of places, they use the DevOps title as a systems administrator title. Uh, yeah, I do think it is. Um, I, I, well, I think there are a lot of companies that are moving towards just making their devs into DevOps engineers. A lot of people are looking for the kind of do-it-all uh, person. Uh, someone who can do the development as well as deal with infrastructure. But I think vast majority right now um, and in, in, in the coming years that it it's really the systems administrator, but with a focus on, you know, administering systems with code, uh, with software, with automation. Um, how do you make that pivot? Again, understand, you know, if you're a systems administrator, uh, really embracing the automation, really embracing the concepts of, of no longer uh, managing your systems like uh, like pets um, and managing them more like cattle. I know it's a little morbid, but um, managing them like, uh, they're, yeah, they're not pets. Um, you know, we, long live servers are, for a lot of places, are kind of a thing of the past. Thing, past things are kind of changing. Uh, things are becoming more mutable. Things are becoming, um, Technology's moved in a way to allow you to move a little bit faster. Uh, so things are a little more throwaway. Again, there are places that, you know, this is not the case. There are places that have, uh, still have to operate in in an older fashion. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. DevOps isn't the answer. It is a way to do things that is very beneficial for the current, uh, for the current state of things and for most companies currently, for sure. Uh, instead of telling failure happens, how DevOps could have saved us, I usually try to build out, yes, a proof of concept to show them instead. Sometimes it works. Yes, that that's very true. That's that's awesome. Um, as a Windows systems administrator, I automated held my current job, Pasha. Awesome. That I mean, that is that that's what it is. Again, it's using a, like a lot of DevOps um, is being able to, you know. Automate enough and, and, and set up these pipelines so that developers can develop as fast as they want. Um, and so that's that's awesome there. 
um have some projects related to devops which was all this boot camp yes um yes you will absolutely learn enough you will you'll do projects uh in this boot camp but yes you will 1000 percent be able to do some projects on your own with that uh, a few friends at 18f 18f is pretty dope um what is the appeal of aws great question uh the appeal of aws for me um, i think for most people is that aws allows you to uh aws gives you and me and anyone else the power at our fingertips uh to be able to wield enough infrastructure to go toe to toe with literally any company out here um I, like right now i won't by myself i could spin up enough infrastructure i could i could uh i could architect services in a way that i could serve millions and millions of people um the same way that a team of engineers used to uh used to do um in years past you know like you, it it allow it, it just gives you access that you never had access to before it gives you access to things that you would have never had access to before uh very quickly very easily and at an affordable price pay for what you use um so that's 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 the appeal of it for me and i think a lot of people all right um so we talked about the old way we talked about kind of what it is um let's talk about some key devops principles a major key alert here one breaking down those silos let's break down those walls we don't need those walls uh we want to be able to speak we want to be able to understand the process uh two automate all the things automation is pretty important humans um were prone to error so you know things that aren't automated things that you have to do manually are um are prone to to issues prone to failure um and then that failure is an opportunity to learn you will fail Things will break. You will do things incorrectly. Uh, but failure is always an opportunity to learn, especially in DevOps. Uh, take those failures, um, retro on them, talk about them, figure out what went wrong, um, take that feedback, adjust accordingly, and you can learn from each of those things. Oh, I've learned so much from failure throughout my career. Uh, it, it's ridiculous. Um, you, you almost learn more through failure than through any video you watch, um, any course you watch. You learn so much uh, through failure and trying to, you know, get out of that failure. But again, opportunity to learn. There's a lot of companies. Uh, I think GitLab is one of them. A bunch of companies do some live, uh, live uh, postmortems when big things happen, when they have big outages. They'll do a live postmortem, and so they'll they'll publicly, you know, go through and figure out what happened and figure out why it happened and what they can do to make sure it doesn't happen next time. And you know, people aren't getting fired there. It's it's a learning process. You know, if uh, you know, in a company who really believes in DevOps, if if one person was to take down, you know, substantial number of servers, that's an issue with the process, not with the person who did it. Uh, there should have been never been a way for someone to be able to do that. Or if there was, um, there needs to be some more checks and balances. Or or maybe it's okay. Maybe we're okay with that uh, level of of risk. But um, it's always an issue with the process. There's always a, something you can learn out of something, and you can adjust accordingly. <coughs> um more key devops concepts so again programming and automation oh this is this is just a uh a re-rundown of everything that we talked about but these are the main key concepts of being able to implement devops so these are the these are the you you may not need all of these things uh depending on the project depending on the organization you may not need each of these things but these are the key concepts that kind of the major concepts that kind of fill in the devops gaps and allow you to be able to create these pipelines allow you to be able to implement devops accordingly so one uh whoops uh programming automation again uh there's a, there's definitely a focus on programming automation in devops two operating systems concepts so a lot of that uh, automation and programming is going to be centered around operating systems and managing operating systems um and the way that they work and their applications that run on them server management you're usually going to have a user base an external user base that you need to serve maybe it's maybe it's hundreds of people, maybe it's tens of thousands of people, maybe it's millions of people, but being able to uh, manage systems accordingly to be able to serve uh, those people is gonna be important. Networking and security, um, obviously security is always pretty important. Um, uh, making sure your infrastructure is secure, making sure your code base is secure, uh, networking, making sure uh, information can get to where it needs to get to. CI, CD, CD. Um, some of you may not be familiar with the second CD there, but that's continuous integration, continuous uh, delivery and continuous deployment. Uh, for our purposes, we are separating continuous delivery and continuous deployment. You usually won't see those uh, separated. 
But those those are the pipelines, the process and the pipelines we're talking about. Uh, that CI, CD, CD, and we'll talk about that some more. Infrastructure as code, super important. Uh, provisioning, uh, server configuration management and scripts. So provisioning is uh, actually, um, actually, what's the, what's a good word to use without using provisioning again? Uh, provisioning is is commandeering almost. It's it's creating tangible um, infrastructure resources, web resources uh, through code. So it's basically telling Amazon, hey, I want a server that's this large, that has this much CPU with this much memory and this much hard drive space. And Amazon will give that a real tangible thing to you make you pay for it, but they'll give it to you. Server configuration management is after you provision that infrastructure, uh, you wanna set it up. So you wanna install some applications on it. You wanna set up some users and set their passwords. Uh, server configuration management is that. <coughs> and then scripting is allowing you to automate tasks that you may have to do manually as well. Uh, cloud computing. A lot of a lot of DevOps concepts were built from the cloud. Uh, so the, the invention of the cloud has allowed a lot of this stuff. Uh, so cloud computing and observability. So you do all these things. Observability is knowing what's going on, um, knowing what's going on in the system and infrastructure. Um, and not only knowing what's going on, because that's kind of monitoring. Observability is being able to deduce some uh, information about it and be able to take action uh, based on the information that you have. So observability is super duper important. So DevOps is a culture. Um, but it's enabled by tooling. And you can see here, there are tons of tools here. Not super important that you look deep at this, but one of the reasons why people get so overwhelmed when they try to get into DevOps is that there are so many tools. There really are so many tools. And that's why it's gonna be so important during this process to focus on the concepts, like focus, focus, focus on the concepts, the, like focus on these sections that, that are here um, rather than the tools themselves. Uh, because again, the tools are interchangeable. Um, we talked about like Jenkins and Circle CI, all those kind of exist right here. Uh, they all do this, the same thing. They do it in a different way, um, but they all do the same thing. So um, it's not important that you understand how to use each and every tool, even though you'll see a lot of tools listed on job descriptions. And we're gonna go over some job descriptions in a second but um, you wanna learn about what, what problem they solve. You don't wanna learn the tools. You don't, you don't need to learn the tool per se. You need to learn what problem it solves. Learn one tool in that, uh, in that, in that category so that you can solve that problem. And then it'll, it'll be relatively easy to move in between tools. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, half of the battle is figuring out what these um, categories are. Um, and then learning what tools are in them. You should get familiar with with that. You should do that much. You should take a look and find out, you know, all the configuration management tools. So Chef, Puppet, Ansible, all those things and all the cloud providers and all the, yeah, all the CI tools. Um, you should learn those categories and what tools fall in them, but not important that you know all these tools because there's a lot of tools. Just we're going to be learning basically one tool out of each of these. So. Let's look at some job descriptions and salaries. So we're gonna be learning all this stuff. So for some of us, the goal is, so some people here um, are probably software developers looking to uh, get more well-rounded and get some more information about, you know, running infrastructure, provisioning infrastructure, infrastructure as code, probably some container stuff. Some of you are systems administrators who are looking to uh, learn a little bit more about automation and how these tools can help you um, assist and help developers. Some of you have know nothing about anything that I'm talking and that's okay. Um, but at the end of the day, a lot of us are gonna be trying to get jobs. Uh, we wanna see the salaries and we wanna see all that stuff. So let's take a look at the job descriptions and salaries. <coughs> um, all right, so we're gonna go right over to Indeed. And you can see here, I've searched just a few times. We're also going to talk about the difference between this and this in a second. But DevOps remote, let's make this a lot bigger because this is tiny. Um, so you get a bunch of stuff here, but let's take a look at one. We'll we'll see what we'll see the different. We'll both see some differences between these job descriptions and similarities. Um, and I encourage you to look at as many of these as you can. And you'll start to make some connections and you'll start to see which ones are similar, which ones are weird. There's some that like, <clears throat> that kind of fall out of the bounds of certain things. You'll also see a lot of things come up that aren't DevOps positions, but in the DevOps search like 
this cloud systems administrator. Again, someone asked, is DevOps the systems administration of the future? Um, it's not supposed to be. Um, it's not supposed to be, but that's kind of what it is. That's kind of how people are using it. Um, that's how companies have defined it. So you'll see things like systems administrators, especially with the cloud, come up during the searches as well. Um, but let's go ahead and click into some actual DevOps positions from different places, some senior and engineer two. And you can see here even some uh, some software engineering ones will come up in there. And let's actually take a look at that because we might be able to see some of the stuff that comes up in there as well. All right, let's make this a little bit big, one more bigger. Um, so cool, it tells us about the company up at the top, um, about the role, we're not reading all this stuff. A lot of information, if, you, if you're interested in this role, uh, you should definitely check it out. But responsibilities, and I've actually, this is actually, a, I haven't looked deep into this, but I actually really like this because um, I don't see a ridiculous amount of, um, I don't see a ridiculous amount of tooling listed. I can already tell a lot of times they just spew tools and technologies out on there. Um, and it's really annoying, but here they do not do that, at least from what I can see. And so let's check it out. So first thing is manage all cloud-based infrastructure, including performance and cost optimization. So it's very important one, not to get overwhelmed by all the things that they ask for. So they'll, everyone will ask for everything. Um, as you pick up a cloud, you'll be able to do this stuff. Uh, this is just, this is right here is just basically saying you're gonna be managing a cloud-based infrastructure. That just means they're operating in the cloud. That means they're probably operating either between uh, AWS, uh, Microsoft Azure, or Google Cloud Platform. Um, and so they're, they're basically just saying, hey, we want you to know the cloud. That's all that's saying right here. Once you know the cloud, uh, maybe you can understand some cost optimization in there uh, so that we're not wasting a bunch of money. Ensure applications and infrastructure observability. So the last thing we talked about as key concept is observability. That means being able to set up ways to be able to monitor uh, and see into your infrastructure, to be able to gather information about your infrastructure, um, you know, using outside tools, without having to log in and, and do a bunch of stuff to get all that information. So that's just saying, hey, I want you to understand how to uh, set up you know, various tools and, you know, monitoring tools and um, and logging platforms and things like that so that you can get information about our infrastructure. Build internal tooling to reduce friction points in the software development lifecycle. So this is something I'm seeing more and more and more. Um, as a DevOps engineer, your, your, your user, the person you're supporting, uh, your users are really the developers. So with the, with the, Ideally, what the goal of a DevOps engineer is, is to create tooling and processes and pipelines to help developers be able to develop as fast as they want to. Um, and so a lot of times you're going to be, you know, you're building these these um, processes and these pipelines, but sometimes you're going to be building them tools. So scripts, uh, things like that to help them be able to do things that they may not um, know how to do. They may kind of be outside of their wheelhouse. Um, so, yeah, so building tools to be able to do that. That's the thing people are asking for more and more. Um, Sometimes that's just thrown in there. I can tell a lot of these things are pulled from something else. But sometimes you will need to be able to do that. Um, watching the Python course might help with some of that. We'll be building some CLI tools in the Python course um, for that. Establish and maintain test suites, collaborating, broader team experience. So as you're going to see through this, really all they're going to do is basically your responsibilities are going to include literally every piece of the software development lifecycle. So usually when they're saying establishing and maintaining these test suites, uh, this is actually usually, I'm pretty sure this is in reference to the CICD uh, portion of the workflow um, and being able to run those tests and be able to manage those test suites, uh, collaborating with broader team to execute. So making sure you're helping the team understand the workflow and understanding the, the CICD pipeline there. Advocate for code quality and automated approaches to ensuring quality. So really, you know, they, they, they've kind of established, you know, some of your development skills here. Now they're throwing in some of your, uh, your testing and quality assurance chops here and making sure you can make sure that your code is good and of quality. Um, share on-call rotation. I, I do my best to stay away from anywhere that has on-call. Even though that's going to be most of the jobs, um, I just been fortunate in, in this position at the position I was at before this. Actively contribute to team and company standards. Very basic. 
Um, there ensure the reliability of systems essential to imperfect customers, internal users. That is, hey, make sure our systems stay up um, and be available to fix them if they break and keep up to date with the latest technology developments, uh, technology developments in your areas of expertise. So the tech industry is an industry of constant learning and that is just keeping up to date. So this is a very, this is a very chill to me. This is a very chill um, job description. Um, these are the, again, most of the non-technical things. These are some of the conceptual things that are a little bit bigger here. Um, and then below they'll usually put the skills and qualifications. So I usually skim this for the, the technologies here. So deep expertise, sure, in AWS. So they want to know, they want some AWS here. Uh, we're going to be going over AWS. Experience implementing infrastructure as code. So they don't, they don't tell you with what tools, but we're obviously going to be going over infrastructure as code. You've seen that uh, in the curriculum. Understanding of a database schema design, caching and scalability. So we're not, this is something we're not going to be going deep over at all. We will be getting into some database stuff in the AWS section, uh, but this is interesting. Um, database schema design, caching and scalability. This is uh, a lot of you systems administrators out there will know this, but this is being able to, you know, operate databases at scale, understanding, um, you know, performance aspects of databases as well. Um, so that's an interesting one, um, but they don't say, oh, so this helps. The next line they tell us with which, with which database. So this does change depending on the database platform you're using. They, they throw out Postgres here. They say, they're very keen to say things like such as, uh, because they, again, they know, they don't want you to be, they're doing their best to make sure that you're not thrown off by these technologies that you don't know. If you're someone who's only dealt with MySQL, um, maybe you could feel comfortable in this position as well. <clears throat> again, the tools don't really, the specific tools don't really matter anymore. Um, but this whole concept of kind of managing databases is important in this role. Um, experience with distributed service oriented systems communicating with restful API interfaces. It would take me forever to really break that whole sentence down there and to tell you the different pieces of that. Um, distributed service oriented systems is, is kind of a big piece of DevOps. We'll talk about uh, distributed systems. We'll talk about um, microservices and service oriented communication, uh, communication uh, forms and interfaces. Uh, we'll talk about APIs as well. Um, and then some extra stuff here. Yeah, this is very interesting. F sharp down here for the languages. Um, but you can see here, they say expertise with at least one modern programming language. They don't really specify. They throw out a couple to hopefully catch the people with, with one of these. Um, but you can see here, a lot of these are, are pretty open to the type of technology. They just want you to be able to program, um, in a certain language. And that can mean a lot of different things. But this bonus is really weird. JavaScript or F sharp. JavaScript, not so weird. F sharp, super weird. Um, that's not something that you'll see often on a DevOps thing. Um, but yeah, very pretty standard one here. Um, leaves the door open. It doesn't really tell us how. To me, I'm not reading this as a super senior person at all. Um, except they, they say the deep expertise here, but I, <coughs> I, I would think this is looking for a. A, a, a junior mid to mid level engineer here. Um, that's what's looking like to me. So move on to the next one. We're not going to go as deep here, but you can see here they have some, again, some more generic stuff at the top. Um, and what I usually like to scroll down and see what technologies they're using. Um, Cause that's pretty important. You may not want to work. So like I, um, I'm a big Linux kind of sewer. Like I love Linux. I love working with Linux systems. Um, I don't really want to work in a Windows environment. Um, I don't mind working in Microsoft Azure, but Azure is not Windows only. Um, and yeah, so I wouldn't want, like, I can already tell this is not a position that I would want. Uh, they're doing some .NET stuff, PowerShell, uh, all these technologies here, as you start to pick up more and more technologies, you'll realize this is a Microsoft ecosystem thing. And this, this ASP.NET, um, they're working in a Windows server environment, uh, which is a little tougher to, um, create DevOps pipelines for, but still doable for sure. Doable, uh, things like I hate when people throw in TFS here. I'm, I'm out on anywhere. It's not using Git. If you're not using Git, I don't want to, I don't want to work there. I really don't. We'll talk about Git later as well, but, um, take like, start to look at some of these and start looking at some of the technologies they have in here. Um, and as you read through most of them, most of them going back to these key concepts here. They will basically be just saying a bunch of things 
uh, whoops, wrong one. They'll basically be saying a bunch of things that that solve each of these problems. They'll, they'll talk about, again, uh, the ASP.NET stuff, they'll talk about which which OSs they're on and server management. And they'll talk about infrastructure as code. They'll probably say something in there. You know, we use Terraform and we use CloudFormation or we use Ansible or we use uh, Puppet or Chef, um, AWS or Azure. Um, we've already seen something about observability. Start to try to match up the things you're seeing with this key concept list and, and finding different pieces. They'll, I'm telling you, they're they're all very similar and they all just have a line item basically solving each of these problems. That's, that's really all each of them are for. Um, and as you pick up these concepts, it should be pretty easy. Let's take a look at the senior level one and see if we can see what, um, what they're asking for that might make this senior. Um, so this one looks like it's Splunk engineer at CrowdStrike. So we know the company here. Um, let's see. In an energetic self-starter, you'll you'll see these all the time, just like any other tech position. Um, deep experience with Splunk administration development. So this one, um, whenever you see some things like this, that uh, we, we saw the one about deep AWS experience. <coughs> When it's about the entire cloud platform they're talking about, that deep understanding usually isn't quite as necessary as something like this when they're talking about a specific technology rather than an entire platform or ecosystem of things. This is talking about Splunk, a deep experience with Splunk. Um, so you probably do need to know Splunk to, to get this position. Um, I know a little bit about Splunk. Um, again, Splunk is a tool, so you will see job descriptions like this that really focus on a specific tool because some companies need someone who knows that specific tool. Um, so this thing, like this is, this says DevOps engineer, but this is a Splunk administrator. It looks like everything, everything on here is about Splunk, except for the last piece talking about Linux systems administration, um, bonus points. So all the other tooling and all the other, um, concepts are kind of bonus points here for them. Uh, so they care about Splunk the most, uh, but they say chef. So configuration management platform, pretty popular, uh, AWS here, Docker and Kubernetes, and basically, they're just listing off some other things, uh, automation with Python scripting. So again, but minus the Splunk stuff, this is talking about a lot of the same things um, here. Again, a cloud provider, container technologies, uh, APIs. So we talked about RESTful APIs in the last one. We'll talk about those since you understand those. But again, you'll start to see a lot of similarities between each of these and what they want. I'm not even gonna go down. You're gonna see all the buzzwords, CI, CD, and test automation and infrastructure as code. And again, these are all the topics that we're gonna be covering. So again, the topics are what are important. So take in the topics, learn the topic. Don't, don't stress about the tool, learn the topic. Um, this is the first one that we've come across that wants a, says it wants a bachelor's. This or a uh, field or equivalent. Nowadays, if you have the, most people are not gonna ask you, if, unless it's like with the government, most people, they put that on there, but they're not gonna ask you about your, a lot of, place, a lot of places are gonna ask you about your education. Um, and it's, it's usually not a requirement at all. If you know what you're talking about, if you can explain the concepts, if you can have conversations about them, people will hire you. So get good, we're gonna get good at talking about this stuff. So learn the stuff, but where you really shine, how you really get the jobs is you get good at speaking about it. Being able to learn is one thing, but being able to show people what you know is, is really how you can get the job. Um, so we'll be talking about that as well. But you can see here, all the stuff that we're gonna be going over, AWS, Linux, et cetera. So, um, I, you guys should go take a look at some of these on your own. Um, take a look, see what they, see what they have. Start to see how, again, how they match up. Maybe if you see some things that, you know, are kind of out of left field again, like that Splunk stuff, you know, um, if you're not sure what it is, this is a good opportunity to, to write down all the things that you see that you have no idea about. Um, and during your free time, uh, start researching those things. You don't need to know it in depth, but say, hey, all right, now I know what I know what Splunk is now and what problem it solves. And I know what uh, test driven, I don't know what test driven development it is. Do I, do I need to know that? Let me go search and see what that is, and read about it, watch a video on it. And now I can speak about test driven development. When, if you're, if you were to get interviewed for this position, they could ask you about it. You would have something to say. You would be able to have a conversation about it. Um, so that you can kind of just get more familiar with these technologies and things that you're seeing. So now we've seen 
what the um, the jobs and the job descriptions look like, but how much are they paying? DevOps engineer salary. So <clears throat> we're gonna get a couple different things. First thing we get off a of glass door is national average being at 103. That is one estimate. You can see here, max 139. Oh, this is just for Verizon. This is not uh, nationwide. This is, let's do Glassdoor. Let's do Payscale, ZipRecruiter. All right, let's check these real quick. So this is just for Verizon. Um, I knew this, that seems a little weird. Um, so interesting, this is uh, 92,992. Um, and we're gonna get different, uh, we're gonna get different answers from each one. I actually think this is a little bit low um, for the national average. Um, and it says that's the median. Okay, just looking at this. So, pay scale. The data that they have says that ninety-two thousand is the average salary. Um, again, your salary is going to be dependent on where you live. Uh, it's it's heavily dependent on where you live. Uh, but a mid-level a mid-level DevOps engineer almost anywhere in the country, just about anywhere in the country, should be netting you six figures, no problem. By mid-level, I'm I'm saying three years of experience should land you over 100K, um, should definitely land you over 100K. If you're on either coast, it should land you way more than 100K. Uh, Baltimore area, Baltimore, DC, Baltimore area, mid-level DevOps engineer, um, probably making between 120 and 140 uh, as mid-level, you know, get three to five years of experience, um, more advanced than that or a lead. Um, you should probably be making upwards of 150. Um, Silicon Valley is gonna be a lot more. Um, they like to, a lot of those companies are working at a bigger scale, so they have a lot of SRE positions. We'll talk about what SREs are as opposed to DevOps engineering positions. Uh, very similar, um, but uh, lead, yeah, lead SREs are making like 170, 190, up to 200. Senior SREs in Portland, 140 to 160. So mid-level, mid to mid-senior levels, Mid-level, you should definitely be, for DevOps, you should, you should be over 100K um, pretty much anywhere you are. So this one, ZipRecruiter has a whole different thing. National average is 133. So you can see a big discrepancy between the data that's here. I don't know where the data is coming from. That's why we're looking at multiple ones. <coughs> um, let's see, I thought I found a third one. Let's check a few more really quick. Let's see what we get here. I know Indeed. 132 here, I know that's little there. This one's saying, oh, um, average base pay is 115 is saying. So again, you can see here that they are, I mean, there's a lot of things that are saying this is that it's over $100,000. Um, right now, DevOps is, DevOps and SRE roles are, are hot right now. They are they are what people need. Um, they're hard, they're, they're, they're hard to hire for as, they're, they are, they're very difficult to hire for uh, because again, people need more and more out of them. Uh, technologies move so fast, it's it gets tough to find someone who knows all the technologies that you need. Uh, so people are more and more open to hiring people who uh, have less and less experience. Um, again, because one salaries are getting super high. So a company that needs a DevOps engineer, um, you know, if, if I come along um, because they can't find anyone that come along, you know, I'm going to ask them for, you know, I'm going to ask them for uh, above one. I'm going to ask them for 150 plus. Um, whereas, you know, they may not be wanting to, like a lot of companies can't pay that much or don't want to pay that much. Uh, so they'll, they'll take a chance on someone who's, you know, trying to learn, who's coming out of a different sector of tech or, or has a lot less experience so they can pay them, you know, 110, 115. So there's a lot of opportunity for jobs out here. There's a lot of even if you don't, even if you're not the best, or you, you think you don't know the most, I'm telling you, you will. There will be situations where, again, they've interviewed three people who are better than you, but each of those people asked for $180,000, and they don't want to pay that. Um, and you, yeah, you were, yes, you were fourth best, but you were fourth best, uh, but you were the first person who was in the salary range that they could accept, um, and they like you, and they will hire you. So just keep that in mind, uh, because it can be frustrating again with all the information that goes into DevOps, uh, learning, learning the methodologies of DevOps. Um, you know, you don't, you do not have to be the best uh, at all. Trust me, you don't have to be the best. There is space out here for all skill levels, and there's space for you as you become the best. You know, it's places, places for you to learn, to grow, um, and you can get all that stuff. Uh, you can, you know, make make whatever you want happen happen. Um, so yeah, so if you can't explain it simply, then you don't understand it well enough. Albert Einstein, very true. Uh, again, 
being able being able to explain something simply is how you can kind of prove uh, that you know what you know, um, and that's when you that's when you really start to to understand things like practice explaining things to people, practice being able to reiterate concepts uh, that you picked up to other people. That's uh, super important. <coughs> um, from salary info: How often do you see remote roles? More and more, uh, they're they're very common now. Um, they're very common. I will say for DevOps engineers specifically, uh, I don't see a lot of like entry level remote roles um, because generally, yeah, I, I don't see a lot of entry level remote roles for uh, DevOps and SRE. Um, I see a lot of mid-level uh, and, and senior, I see a lot of senior roles that are remote. Um, so you can definitely get a remote role. I've, I've had a few. Um, I work. I work in office now, and I actually prefer it. I know people may think that's weird, but um, I have a. I have like the most amazing team in the world, and uh, it it's really is a pleasure to work with them. So like, I, I love coming into the office. You know, having that camaraderie, uh, getting stuff done, working through problems together. It's actually it's actually pretty fun. It makes the day go by faster, um, for sure. Um, take a look at big tech company job description. See what technologies they are using. Then go learn them. That's a great. Uh, <laughs> Thug Muffin, I like that name. Um, that's a great, that's a great, uh, that's great advice there. Uh, definitely take a look at some of the bigger companies, Google, things like that. Um, and, and go learn what they're asking for because again, usually they're a little more cutting edge. Usually they're they're a little faster moving and usually they're uh, they're on the right side of the tech curve. So what they're, whatever they're asking for is probably what you should be learning um, for sure. Um, Rotely... Is a shortage of devs and DevOps? Absolutely. There is for sure a shortage of engineers, uh, period. And we're trying to solve that. I, I I really hope for everyone to really become proficient and really, you know, get comfortable in their journey um, and, and grow um, in this. Um, on a remote team, it was hard. It It is hard. It's tough working remotely full time. It takes a certain level of discipline. There's some loneliness. There's some, you know, interacting with people. For, for for someone like me, interacting with people is good. Very helpful. It also accelerates your learning. Like I'm so I'm I'm a technical lead, but like I'm not a technical lead of a of a DevOps team. I'm the technical lead of an application development team. And so as a DevOps engineer, I had never written React or developed, you know, any kind of a JavaScript application, things like that. Um and so being able to like work with my team and like do hands on, you know, pair programming with them and mod programming um, really accelerated, you know, like I, I do how to code already, but uh, putting, taking my coding skills and put it, putting it into that paradigm, really like being able to work with people uh, really accelerated how I was able to, I guess, be effective um, on the team uh, for sure. So um, SRE equals site reliability engineer. Yes. And we're going to talk about site reliability engineers in a second. That's not really junior DevOps, not something that people typically start with. Yes, oh, that is something I wanted to bring up. I'm glad someone said it. So uh, actually at a DevOps days conference, we talked about there being the concept of there being no uh, junior, of there being no such thing as as JV in, in DevOps. Um, because think back to what I said about DevOps. Think about, think about Nathan Harvey's definition. Um, this is something that is born out of, out of the experiences of its practitioners. Uh, so that makes it kind of tough if you do, if you never had the experience. Um, so there's, there's this idea of not being really any junior DevOps roles. So generally pe what people do is they, they, they come in from a different side. So they may go into systems administration. You may go be a Linux administrator. You may go be a, de a developer, a software developer, a web developer, um, uh, QA, uh, like all of these things are are adjacent, uh, and they're all part of the software development lifecycle. Remember, SDLC, software development lifecycle. So the goal is to get in at one of these places, at one of the spots that exists on the software development lifecycle uh, pipeline. Um, and once you're in on one of those spaces, so kind of focus in on one place. And once you're in on there, you can kind of take your skills, you can pick up more skills, and you can apply those things, concepts of DevOps. Um, I wouldn't expect. It, it would be very difficult. I think very difficult for anyone on here. You could go through this course, you could pick up all the skills. It would be very difficult, even if you knew the concepts, um, not having the, like not having like managed systems at scale or not having managed production grade systems. Um, not like, I don't know. It, it would be very tough to do the job. It would be very scary to me. Um, so a way to get in is to, 
get in, uh, pick up, pick up a few of the concepts. So again, you can get in as a Linux administrator. We can go through this whole thing. You can just pick up Linux and and take up, just pick up Linux and the the uh, the server management portion, and you can go get jobs doing exactly that, which are beneficial. Uh, to your journey into DevOps, or you can take this first part and you can learn Golang or or Python, and you can go be a developer and work with DevOps engineers and understand the pipeline, understand the processes, and then you can kind of ease your way into DevOps. Uh, there, there are a lot of ways to get in, um, but there's really no junior. There, there aren't really many, many places to have a junior engineer. Uh, so here at Fearless, or not here at Fearless, but at Fearless, the place that I work. We actually hired, um, we had a testing intern. Uh, she had been a part of the project for three years. Uh, she graduated and she said she wanted to do DevOps. So we had a DevOps level one listed as something that we did hire for, but we never hired any level ones. And so we've kind of, we're, we're, we're working on how to do that. So she's been in, she's been in the position for a few months now, doing great. Uh, it's been a, it's been a very eye opening process on like, realizing the, the staggering amount of things that you had to have like, levels of things that you had to have picked up over the years like we'll be working through some things and she'll she'll be amazing at one thing because she has a development background she's she has a computer science degree and like she's done stuff like that so that'll make sense to her and then something that maybe i think is relatively simple uh may not be so great like like may surprise me because it's like oh like actually for you to know that thing that i assume is simple you had to know these 10 layers of other things that like you just wouldn't have known because you just haven't seen those things. So it's been pretty interesting. Uh, it's been a pretty interesting um, exercise, um, but it's pretty dope. Um, I think more and more people will have to start doing things like that because uh, more like this is something that's needed more and more. And it's 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 really hard, again, to find people who have um, the skills for this. Um, no positions on the fence about it. I found Depends on your company if you're good at supporting remote employees or not. That's true. Um, <clears throat> from dev to DevOps for months, but can't find a junior DevOps roles. Look, if you, if you, if you, uh, Adam, if you have, if you have dev shops, um, I actually think devs make better DevOps engineers. This is gonna hurt a lot of people's feelings, and this is coming from a from a system of uh, someone with a systems engineering background. Uh, I think devs who move into DevOps actually make better DevOps engineers than systems administrators who move into DevOps, mostly because of the way that you think. Um, because because devs are are used to using code to solve problems and your your job has generally been developing features developing things quickly um or as fast as the customer needs them your your mindset's a little bit different uh, systems administrators generally have the mindset of keeping things stable uh systems, systems administration the 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 path of systems administration or the ethos of systems administration is generally to keep things stable to move a little bit slower to make sure things are up and running and working but um when your DevOps is is quite the opposite, it's it's about moving quickly and being able to support the developer. And who better to support a developer than a developer? To be honest with you, uh, again, I said earlier that the developer is your customer, um, and someone who truly understands the gripes of the development software development process uh, really is better equipped to uh, to to solve those problems. I know, again, I know it sucks. I know it sucks to hear. It's gonna make some people mad. I hope, hope it doesn't make people too mad. Again, I'm from a systems administration background, but I do think that um, I do think that people with software development backgrounds make better DevOps engineers. Again, just because you don't have to go through the massive uh, mindset shift that we do. The, the skills, like systems administrators, usually have to learn less. Like you usually have to learn less. They really just have to pick up a programming language, to be honest. And some of these, some of these tools, but like it's the way that you think that's a little bit different, which is tough. Um, so yeah, I'm a build and release engineer. That's a good one to be able to move into DevOps for sure. Um, build and release engineers. If you can find a build and release engineering job, uh, that's usually a good one to get you adjacent to all of this stuff and to be able to see all this stuff and how it works for sure. The school for network admin, infosec, classes, got a job, big company, web operations, the public for conversion, and wrote some scripts and stuff. Yep. <clears throat> you pick it up. You pick it up uh, over time. You know, you're just, you're just adding to the toolbox. You know, you just, you, t you have your toolbox and all you're doing is just, you know, over the years, over time, you're just adding different things to it so you can solve more and more problems. Roles, pure ops roles are disappearing. That is, that's true. Um, they, they won't, they won't ever disappear completely, but for the most part, admin roles and pure, pure ops roles are for the most part, they're going away. Um, 
again, they'll always exist, but um, they're they're rapidly declining uh, for sure. Um, yes, yeah, so I could learning technologies in depth though. I just so <laughs> that's that's very funny. Um, I don't think that devs suck at learning technologies in depth though, at all. Uh, but I will say that devs want to develop. Like th again, it, it comes with the it comes with the ethos of the position. Uh, devs want to develop fast. Like like they, the goal is to make features. The goal is to make their software. At the end of the day, all the other stuff is extra, and it really it, it kind of is. It, it, all the other stuff is extra. Like the the the, sh the everyone's there for the code, the show. Like the things that people see are going to be the code that the developers write. Um, and so when that's your focus. Um, I, I understand, I, I have, in my experience, I've seen the developers um, do their best to learn a technology enough so that they can be effective with it and so that they can continue to code faster or to get there to deploy their code or release their code, uh, make their make the development flow better. Um, and I like and I get that. I, I don't think that that means that devs suck at learning technologies in depth. I think that devs have a different, are coming from a completely different angle and don't always need to know uh, the technologies the same depth that a systems administrator might need to pick it up um, to make things stable, to make changes, things like that. But um, yeah, I mean, I do think that there's, again, there's an ethos that comes from doing development for years or doing uh, systems administration for years, UX, UI for years. Like there's something that comes behind that. Um, and I think that it does affect the way that you approach uh, learning things. Um, I think it can affect the way that you approach learning things, but I, I wouldn't say that devs suck at learning technology depth at all. Uh, I think I think that um, I actually think they're more capable of learning technologies more in depth, to be honest. Uh, again, it's just it's just because it's, it's just a different thought process. And I didn't know that until I dived deeper into the development side of things. Um, new tools seemingly coming out daily. That's true. Uh, do you really need to learn something in depth? No, I, that is a great question. So I would pick, I will pick a few things, learn them in depth, but you don't need to, um, at all. Like I've, I can hop around, I can literally hop around to any configuration management tool I want because I understand the concepts of configuration management. I can do enough Googling. I have enough experience to where I can, you know, hop in and use it uh, effectively. Um, maybe I'm not an expert at it. I wouldn't be an expert at it, but I will be able to use it effectively without having to dive deep at all. Um, for sure. Uh, just learn Python and you'll be good. Python is great. Uh, again, I have my gripes with Python, but Python is great. That's why we're going to be teaching it. Um, it will carry you a long way. And if you're trying to dive into coding, um, especially as a systems administrator, Python is what you should be learning. Um, yes, we're doing Golang. I feel strongly about Golang, but you should be learning Python. I, it's got it's to be honest. You should be learning Python. Um, Yes, and make sure you're learning Python 3 because Python 2 is now end of life, even though they're going to be doing some last release in like June or something super weird. Um, but yeah. All right. I don't know if we got through all the slides or not. What time is it? All right. We got seven minutes. Uh, we looked at this and I think that was the last one. Yeah, that was the last slide. So now we can just now we can just uh, we can just talk, have some conversation. So. Hopefully that gives you, gave you some concept, uh, some context around DevOps and what it is, um, not important that you know exactly what it is. Again, you'll fill in the gaps over the course. But again, the things that I want you to remember is that it's a cultural and professional movement. It's not a job title. It's a cultural and professional movement um, focused on how we build and operate high velocity organizations born from the experiences as practitioners. And um, yeah, and again, breaking down these silos and really making this process smoother. <coughs> again, that this will... You'll get more context around it as we dive into things, as we do, as we do different projects and things like that. So what I want you to do from this, uh, everyone who is subscribed, um, an email will be coming out from Twitch shortly uh, with, uh, it'll be coming out tonight with the code for the Google Classroom, how to get in. Um, shoot me a messages if, if you're having trouble getting in, everyone should be able to get in. When you get in, you'll be able to see the four, uh, you'll be able to see four courses of assignment. So you'll be able to see the, uh, the one for this stream, you'll be able to see the one for a Tuesday and the one for Sunday of next week and Tuesday of next week. Uh, only I, I don't recommend that you dive deep, um, past the ones for today, go over the stuff that I sent you today. Um, just for, for today's class. Um, you probably won't get through all of it by Wednesday, but by Wednesday, the, 
you'll have the whole week of stuff and just run through that stuff. Again, it's a lot of videos, a lot of things that'll give you some more information about what DevOps is. Um, and just ways, ways to think about it. Um, and then besides that, have some conversations, like start some conversations in the Slack about what you think it is. Uh, read about it, uh, watch some videos, uh, talk with each other about what it is, what it's not, um, and what, and you know, what, what you believe it is in your experience. And again, it's, it's, it's different everywhere you go. Um, the job titles will be, will be, they'll have the same concepts, but the actual work will be different everywhere you go. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's start a conversation about what it is and maybe to have a conversation about what it should be. Um, help people understand if you're really confused still, um, which is completely okay. Remember the, one of the first things I said is get okay with being lost, get okay with not understanding. It's, it's very okay. Get okay with being confused. Again, talk with each other. See if you can flesh it out. If you have more questions, uh, reach back out. We'll 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 figure out how to do that. Um, we'll figure out how to get those questions answered for you. Um, but yeah, that's the that's that's all I have for tonight, specifically about DevOps. Now I'm here for the questions. Um, I'll stay along. I'll stay around as long as people have questions. Let's have a conversation um, about whatever. Um, more about DevOps. Uh, more about whatever questions you have about the industry. Um, about the course itself. If you want to know more about what's going on with the course itself, um, ask away. But if you're, I want to be conscious of everyone's time. Um, so if you're, you know, this is the end of episode number one. This is the end of the first class. If uh, the official end, if you need to go. But if not, stick around. Uh, let's talk a little bit. Um, you mentioned during the stream that you might do a Discord. Great question. Do you have those details yet? So. The only reason, so as of right now, the Discord won't uh, happen. The reason, the reason I, I want to do the Discord is because the Discord better allows me to manage um, how people get the information for the the classroom without having to spam you guys with emails, um, or so that people don't have to keep reaching out to me for information about that stuff. Um, because I have no way outside of that to confirm who's subscribing, who's not. Um, but you know what? It's not that serious right now. And again, there's probably some things that are happening that may not make that relevant at all anymore. So we're going to stick with Slack. Again, we're using Slack over Discord because uh, Slack is is the tool that most companies are using internally. Uh, so I want people who aren't in the industry at all to get comfortable using one of these technologies so that, you know, if they, if they work hard and they're able to get a job in the tech industry, you know, this is one piece that they're comfortable with as they go into their new job. Um, but I may still start the discord anyway, uh, for future things. Um, and it may be the discord. Will pro if I do start a discord, it'll probably be for subscribers only. So maybe we will still just start that anyway. Um, and if we do do that, um, I might, uh, not and as more people join, I may not answer questions from the chat. I may answer questions or or I might prioritize questions from the discord from the subscribers um, for sure. But we'll we'll figure that out. As of right now, there's no discord. As soon as there is a discord, I'll let you know. Uh, but there's a slack. Uh, where's the link to sign up? I'm assuming you mean to the discord. There's not one for discord. You can sign slack. Uh, you can sign up for slack and just do the chat command for slack if you want to do that. Um, I assume you talk about why why Golang over Python on Tuesday. Absolutely. We can talk about that now a little bit for sure. Um, we'll just super quick, um, super quick, uh, Golang over Python specifically for this course uh, because, because we're not diving super deep um, into the programming language because we're spending, I think, three weeks on it or three three courses on it. Um, you can't, I can't really teach you completely how to program in that amount of time, but Golang implements some, uh, introduces you to some additional concepts, um, software development concepts than Python does. It is a statically typed, um, it's a compiled statically typed language, um, which just introduces some concepts that Python doesn't, uh, that I think are interesting, uh, that I think are important if you're, you know, trying to get deeper. Um, into coding, you know, to give you the tools to dive deeper. I think starting with Golang is a little bit better um, if you're really trying to get good at programming. Um, also, Golang, most DevOps tools, like not most, but a lot of the popular DevOps tools, Docker, Terraform, a bunch of other ones are, are built out of Go because of its, it, how performant it is, uh, as well as its readability. Um, it's pretty easy to write. Um, <coughs> yeah, and, and I, I think it's a, I just think it's a good place to start people off with computer science topics and programming topics, if we're not going to dive super deep, um, I think it's, I think it gives you enough concepts uh, to to kind of keep moving with, uh, for sure. That's 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 the reason we're using GoLang there, um, as opposed to Python. But if you want the Python again, I'm 
join in tomorrow where that's all we're doing we're doing full 12 weeks of python so you can get good at that uh you upload these videos for reviewing purposes yes they will be here on twitch for 60 days uh but they will also they also go up on i'm actually i found that um that i'm not allowed to put these on um on youtube technically because of the terms of service for uh 24 hours so in 24 hours this will be up um there will be a new playlist up that incorporates the videos from this uh from this cohort um so yes these will be up again on here for 60 days and they will be up on youtube until the next time this runs um which will be we're running we're running these three times this year um so this is yeah I uh, regret not learning more Pearl than, than to put out fires. Well, uh, man, I'm, I, I kind of want to ask you how old you are. Um, an angry Mohawk. Um, yeah, Pearl, Pearl's fine. Um, yes, everyone learned just enough to put out fires. Uh, definitely don't learn more than that now, but I, I, I guess I get regretting it. Uh, when I was converting Pearl to Python, I didn't dislike Pearl. There's definitely some oddities about it. Yeah, I don't love Pearl. Uh, what's wrong with TFS? You didn't mention anything specific. So, um, now okay, I'll, I'll, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys throughout this whole thing. I've never used TFS, um, but from my understanding, and maybe I'm completely wrong, and maybe I'll look it up really quick. Um, so T, TFS is like Team Foundation Server or something like that, um, which I think is a Microsoft uh, tool. Um, for source code man management. Um, so I think the issue um, that I think I know about TFS is, um, I don't think TFS is a good distributed uh, model because I think only one person can check out a file at a time. If I'm, if, if I, if I remember it properly, if I understand it properly, maybe I'm wrong. <clears throat> maybe I'm thinking of a different service. But that's super problematic for me. That seems like a really treacherous workflow, um, for sure. Um, but again, I, I'm I don't know. I don't know everything about TFS at all. Um, just going off, I'm only going off of things that I heard about it. Uh, to be honest with you, um, and I think there are so few places operating um, with TFS in comparison to Git that I, I don't know. I just see I, it seems really weird to me that people are using things other than git it really does the more and more i dive into like i've used things like perforce and some other things it's like this is weird but again i'm happy to have a conversation about it i don't know everything if you want to educate me on it educate me on it at any time if i say anything wrong if i say anything you don't agree with fight me on it well don't fight me on it but like uh, contest me on it. Absolutely. Let's have a conversation about it. These conversations are healthy. These conversations are good. People can learn a lot just from the conversation that we're having. So feel free to, to make your case for TFS if I'm completely wrong or if uh, or if it's great or whatever, I'm sure. Uh, they will be on Twitch for 14 days after a stream. Um, I think they should be. I'm an affiliate, so <clears throat> I, I thought I read they will be up for 60 days because I'm an affiliate, but we'll see. Uh, will subscription provide hands-on labs? Yes, um, there will be a lot of hands-on labs, a whole lot of hands-on labs. Um, almost for every single thing that we do, there'll be hands-on labs. So yes, it will. Um, especially for the subscription, there will be hands-on labs that are inside of the Google Classroom for sure. Uh, thanks for the great session. Uh, thanks for coming through, Karsten. Uh, gotta head out, but thank you. Good, have a good night, everybody. Um, have a good night. Um, C-Bond, for sure. Thank, thank you for coming through. We're good to see everyone, by the way. Get your hands on some uh, fine cider. Oh, yes. I will. Uh, oh, fire cider. Yeah, I will try. I mean, I'm almost. it's almost gone. I was dying on Christmas day and the day after. Well, Christmas, I was starting to die. The day after Christmas, I was dying. Like, I, I thought I had the flu. Um, like, low energy, like, achy muscles. Like, I had to use, I was, like, lightheaded every time I got up. Like, I was a little bit woozy. It was super weird. And then I got some real good sleep, sweated it out, and I was, for the most part, fine. Got a little cough still going on. Uh, just a tiny bit congested, but, like, I'm, I'm definitely doing good. But uh, I'll take that into account. Maybe I'll find myself some. Uh, Discord has great search capability without having to spend money. Yes, that was so glad you brought that up. Um, uh, was MG three IST? I don't, I don't know how to pronounce that, but, um, yes, when I found out that, um, 
the the capabilities that Discord had over Slack without having to pay for it, or even if you pay for it, uh, it's only like five dollars per month or something like that. It's super cheap. Um, so it is still on the table for sure. Discord is absolutely on the table. Um, I just I didn't have time to dive into it. I just don't know enough about Discord yet to know if I should switch over to it or how that would work. Um, yum yum. Thanks for the continued subscription. I really appreciate that. Um. The great session. I'm I'm super happy everyone came through. I'm I'm actually floored by the amount of viewership. Um, super glad this many people were were able to join. I'm glad people are excited about it. Um, we're gonna be learning a lot starting next class. We're gonna be learning about coding. We're gonna dive in. We're gonna be coding next class. Uh, if you're in the Python course, uh, if you're gonna be doing the Python course, join in tomorrow. Uh, it'll be mostly the same as tonight though for the Python course. It'll be uh, mostly syllabus day, um, except for we're gonna be going over. There's gonna be a lot of overlap in this first week. Uh, we'll be going over like the basics of coding, like introduction to coding concepts and things like that tomorrow, uh, rather than what is DevOps. Um, but basically the same thing I'll be, basically what I'll be doing tomorrow will be very similar to the things that we're going to be doing on Wednesday. So, uh, feel free to, uh, to do whatever there to join whichever one you want. Uh, got here late. What time did the live stream start again? They started at 8 PM Eastern time. Um, so I'm on the East coast. I'm in Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, they started at eight. Again, if you, uh, I know it's not a great time for everyone. Um, I tried to make it at a time that gave people some time to watch it, but also they could still go to bed early enough to get to work the next day. Um, hopefully, you know, if you got young kids, you already put them down by eight o'clock. Uh, but if not, again, they will be available afterwards, uh, and they will be available on YouTube afterwards. Um, oh yeah, one thing about YouTube is this year one of my focuses is to. I've got a couple YouTube videos up, but um, I really want to add a lot of content on YouTube that's going to be very different from this content. It's going to be very uh, high level concepts about tech. There's going to be, you know, things like explaining it like a five series. So explaining, you know, complex topics uh, pretty simply uh, for people. There's going to be, you know, different topics on how to navigate the tech industry and, you know, how to do certain things. So, um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be putting out a video every Friday. I'll be doing a video drop every Friday. Um, Yes, I'm, I'm putting I'm putting it out there now because um, that's going to be the goal to put out a video every Friday. So keep an eye on that as as well as the stuff that goes up from from these. Um, that old pearl is fine. Yeah, pearl is fine. People hate it, but pearl's fine. I thought TFS was, was a GitHub. <laughs> that's funny. I'm probably talking about pre Git TFS. Maybe. Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, so, I, so maybe it is. Is is TFS Git based now? That's awesome. If it is, then I'm tripping, and you taught me something new. And then maybe TFS is fine. Maybe it's just a, maybe. It, so what I'm getting for those two from those two comments is that TFS is uh, the source code repository for. It's just a source code repository for Git, uh, like Bitbucket maybe, um, or like GitHub or like GitLab. If it is, I'll check it out. Then maybe I'm tripping. Um, I like per force. Okay. You can set up different settings per team. That was an option. Yes. Okay. So it sounds like you have some option there to be its own thing. And now host get repos. Gotcha. See, I learned something. From, see, every time I told you, I try to teach, but you guys always give me something back. Um, I learned a ton from you all. Um, like I said, I do not know everything at all. Um, no one knows everything. Remember that was one, that was one of the things that we, that I want you to get out of this. Um, you said to be empowered to get. You're wrong about pancakes being greater than waffles. Uh, waffles love so. I like waffles. Don't get me wrong. I like waffles, but I like waffles in a very specific way. They've got to be Belgian. They've got to be soft, like pancakes. Basically, a pancake the shape differently is how I like my waffles. Um, so I, I eat waffles, even crispy waffles. You know, waffles are great, but pancakes are superior. There's a reason why there's an IHOP. There's no International House of Waffles. There's only an International House of Pancakes because pancakes are far superior. Um, no one hosts a unlimited uh, waffle series because pancakes are better. People have unlimited pancakes all the time because it's better. It's definitely better. Uh, let's see, Knox, ATL, good night. Good night, man, see you, see you later. Um, I just got over flu, sorry. Yeah, I, I read something saying this is gonna be the worst year for the flu, like in decades or something. Uh, I was definitely going around. By hosting your own rocket chat. I don't know what rocket chat is, but I'm checking it out right now. That looks cool. Maybe I will. Maybe we will. Maybe, that, you know what? 
this is great. And if I have to install it on my own server, this is a project that we could do. Maybe we won't be the, maybe it won't be the main source of communication, but maybe we'll do a project setting it up. Maybe we can containerize it. Maybe we can, you know, set up infrastructure as code. This is cool. I'll check out Rocket Chat. Maybe we can get that in because then it's something we can all use together. Um, Discord has a great Python Discord community. That's cool. I'll see if I can find that. <clears throat> I'm in so many slacks. I guess I got to get in a bunch of discords now too. Do you recommend doing both courses simultaneously? Yes, um, I do. Because um, if I were any, I mean, my recommendation would be is like, especially if you're new to all this stuff, to really focus on the Python course and take the concepts from like, everyone should be taking the concepts from here. But again, you know, people who are really trying to get deeper into DevOps, um, you'll be you'll be really hands on labbing and doing a bunch of stuff. I if I if I was someone who was new to all this stuff, I would really take my time and put my energy into the DevOps. I mean, into the Python course while watching this and, and, and starting to understand, you know, all the aspects of the software development lifecycle, but um, not necessarily putting all of my focus in it. Just because this has so many different pieces, I think Python would be a good thing to focus your energy into. Uh, but I do recommend doing both at the same time. Sure, learning more than one language if you're just uh, picking up programming. Um, I would say n no. Um, I wouldn't try learning more than one. I think it's fine messing around with, with with multiple ones. But like, I wouldn't I wouldn't actively try to learn more than one if like you're just gonna pick up programming. Um, only because I think you'll get too you'll get more hung up on the syntax than you should. Um, yeah, syntax is important, but nowadays your your IDE or your text editor will do most of the work for you. Uh, so the goal again. I'm gonna harp on it so much is the concepts. So, you know, when we get into programming, like things like variables and things like conditionals and comparison operators and loops, uh, they are they are uniform across coding languages. So right now I would be able to solve um, a lot. Like I don't really know Ruby, um, but I'm confident that because I know because I know the tools for programming, because I know um, the, the tools that I can use to solve programming problems. I'm confident I could be able to, I would be able to look up Ruby documentation and look up and Google around and be able to solve problems with Ruby right now, like at this moment right now, if I needed to, again, because the concepts are what are important, are what are important, the, those tools are what are important rather than the language itself and the syntax. Um, but I wouldn't recommend that in the beginning because again, I think you're gonna get hung up on the weird syntax between the two. Uh, you're gonna focus on that more than you should if you're trying to learn more than one at once. But um, it can be a good thing to look at another language, how another language does something to kind of submit the concept for you. Uh, is the Python one new or has this been going on already? No, Python one is brand new, starts tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's the first day we've never done the Python one. We've done this one before, never done the Python one. Um, maybe you give me tips on getting my two year old to sleep at eight. I, I don't have kids. I thought maybe eight was a good time where kids would be down. I, I got no tips. If anyone in the chat has tips. Oh, oh, people are, I can see people are giving you the answers. Whiskey. I cannot, uh, I cannot confirm nor deny that this is a good or bad way to get your kid to fall asleep or a legal way. Don't really know. Um, Maybe like Benadryl. I've heard Benadryl. I don't know if those are from bad parents or not, but uh, I heard that helps. Um, Grace Session, appreciate that. Appreciate the kind words. Uh, what terminal do you use? So, hey, we talk about that a little bit. Um, I use a uh, Hyper. Um, it's a it's a no. It's a, it's a it's a JavaScript. It's an Electron terminal. So it's JavaScript. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, I've got. I've got a good amount of customization here. Um, it's got tabs. Um, I got some cool things like some cool plugins that gi that give me some extra things. Like I think when I push Git code, cool rocket like shoots off. When I pull code, rocket pulls down. Um, but I use Hyper. Um, it Hyper is not for everyone. It runs it runs super well on this computer. Um, it does not run well on my Windows machine at all. I don't know why. Um, I've, I, it's been hit or miss on a bunch of things. I have Windows machines that it runs great on. Um, most of my Linux machines, it usually runs fine on. Um, so hit or miss, um, but a cool terminal that gives you a lot of uh, cool things you can do. Um, a lot of plugins, a lot of cool things you can, you can build it out. Um, Waffle, oh, Waffle, you're right. Waffle House. I 
I was tripping. So I'm up in Maryland. We don't have no Waffle Houses in Maryland. Um, we gotta go down to Virginia and drive down a little bit in Virginia for Waffle House. So there is a Waffle House, uh, but it is not nationwide like IHOP is. I might have just lied to you. I don't know if IHOP is nationwide, but I'm so confident that people like a pancakes better than waffles that I'm gonna assume IHOP is nationwide because I've been to one here and I've been to one in California. So I'm gonna assume it's nationwide for sure. Uh, but there is Waffle House, so I stand corrected. That does not mean waffles are as good as pancakes, because uh, they're not at all, not even a little bit. Um, any DevOps women here? Great question. Are there any DevOps women in here? I would love to know. So uh, what's very interesting about uh, Fearless is our DevOps team, when our DevOps team was only about like 10 people, it's a little bit bigger now. Um, we had we had like, we had like four or five five women on it, which is very interesting because before uh, before I before I worked here, I, I had never worked with another uh, woman DevOps engineer. Like I had never worked with a woman DevOps engineer, which is which was interesting. So it was very exciting to like to see so many women. Like I, I think they equaled us or maybe outnumbered us, um, which was great, which was really awesome. Um, so I would like to know if there are any women DevOps engineer. I've been super adamant. There's been so many like we, we had a woman that used to work at Fearless and all I would try to do is get her to be a DevOps engineer. She was like, I don't know what I want to do. I was like. DevOps, like everyone should go DevOps. We're trying to convert one of our devs now. Uh, she's an amazing dev. We're trying to convert a DevOps right now. Um, but I would like to know if there are any women DevOps engineers in here. Um, that's awesome. Um, Rocket Chat is a little bit better than Mattermost. I've heard hit or miss things about Mattermost. Um, Cloud on Fleek, that's awesome. Um, where do you, do you mind, where do you work if you, uh, you don't mind, and and actually, now where do you work? Have you one? Have you ever worked with any other women DevOps engineers um, at the same company, um, or do you come across a lot of women um, DevOps engineers? Your fellow women DevOps engineers, I should have asked. <coughs> um, packaging ecosystem. Oh uh, yeah, packaging ecosystems for languages is it can be rough. Sure. Yeah, um, it is interesting because a lot of people, uh, so many people don't stick with with tech for, for a lot of reasons. I, I definitely understand. Um, again, it's it's like it's like anything else you got to be disciplined. at. It's like, again, like like it's very much like losing weight. It's like, you know what you need to do to get to the end. You know, you know that if you do the right things and you focus that you'll get there. Um, but it's very hard to to keep motivated. Um, yeah, super difficult to keep motivated. Um, actually, I'm gonna start doing little motivational minutes at the end of all of these, uh, starting next week to, to, I don't know, to talk about ways to keep, the people can keep themselves motivated. So like, one of the things I do to keep motivated and all the stuff is like, when I go work out, like on the way to working out and while I'm working out, I, I listen to I listen to motivational speeches that they're cheesy, uh, some of them are cheesy, but like, the, the key is to keep your mind on to keep your mind on the end goal, to keep your mind on what you're trying to achieve. And um, I don't know, it, it's really easy to not stick with that. I work, I work, I work with a couple of meetups. Um, one of the meetups, there's, there's been a couple of people who've been like, who've been really at it like for a long time and they keep stopping and coming back to it. It's really, sometimes it's hard to keep people, uh, keep people going, but it is disappointing, but hopefully we can figure out some ways uh, to keep people going. And NyQuil, if you're broke, uh, NyQuil is cheaper than whiskey. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> time. Um, as Brucey, I'm gonna check that out. I'll definitely check that out here. ZSH and Hyper, you're a 90s kid. So I don't, again, I don't like ZSH. I'm getting rid of it. Um, let me, I'll show you right now why the, one of the biggest reasons why I hate ZSH. So. Let's say I want to go into my documents here, right? I'm in my documents. I've got I've got these uh, these things here. Now, what I hate is that Linux Linux itself is it is case sensitive. It is case sensitive. It like it it is and. ZSH tries to be helpful. It tries to be helpful to the user um, <clears throat> and make it so that you don't have to care about case when you're, you know, doing string autocompletes and things like that. So let's say I want to CD into like, uh, let's say I do a capital P. 
so I can get into my personal documents. Yeah, when I tab, I would assume, at least coming from Bash, it should fill out personal documents because the P's capital, there's one thing that matches it, but it gives me both options. Like why, like that's so dumb. Like I, I don't, like I hate, I hate that it's that. It should be case sensitive because Linux is case sensitive. Um, but I got a lot of, I have so many strong opinions about it now, but uh, I'm, I'm again, I'm giving it a go. It does look cool. Um, it looks cool, but um, yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that at all. Uh, if you're on a Mac, I recommend iTerm2. Yep, Mac, iTerm2. I, if you're looking for a terminal, I recommend iTerm2 as well. Um, I do use a Mac um, for my day job. Uh, so I, I use Windows, Mac, and PC. I love them all for different reasons. Um, Mac, uh, Mac's uh, by default now, RZSH. So if you're we're going over some things, I, like that's another reason why I might have to I might have to use ZSH for this because uh, Macs are, which is by default now, which is really interesting. Um, oh, I'll try that out. I've been using Linux for a long time. I didn't know. I'd never heard of this Asbro CM thing. I use Terminator and some other stuff in Quake. Yeah. <coughs> Um, let's see. DevOps is a form methodology in healthcare. Yes, understandably so. Uh, the DevOps, the, the healthcare systems are super important. Um, there's there's a lot of security involved. There's a lot of things involved in healthcare systems. So healthcare moves slow. The health like healthcare moves super slow, and DevOps is a uh, it's the opposite of slow. Um, it's supposed to be the opposite of slow. Uh, so yeah, healthcare is definitely a space where DevOps has yet to be implemented and there's definitely tons of opportunity to implement it there. Mattermost is dope. Um, I know, I think a couple of our projects are using Mattermost. I think some of our clear projects maybe, I don't know. Um, all right, uh, Fomomo, have a good night. Looking forward to future sessions, awesome. Look forward to seeing you. Everyone's got good things to say about Rocket Chat. Again, we'll 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 definitely have to do a little lab with Rocket Chat, um, especially because I've never set it up before. Maybe we'll go through. I'll set it up. I'll see if I can get it installed on a server, public server, and then um, so one you can you can watch how I go through and I don't know follow documentation, learn new things. Uh, again, maybe we can um, we'll automate it. We'll if it's not already containerized, we'll containerize it or. We'll uh, we'll we'll set up some Ansible stuff with it or Terraform. We'll we'll do a whole thing. But Rocket Chat sounds like a good thing, so I appreciate appreciate that. Um, all right, Cloud on Fleek, peace. See you see you later. Um, gotta go myself. RMG, see you later. Now we'll represent it. Now pushes a career option with us. Yeah. Um, yes. Tech. Tech is not uh, pushed for a lot of people. Um, a lot of people aren't well represented in tech. Um, I, again, until I am where I was, where I am now, um, at Fearless, um, there, there, there's again, it, it's not super representative of a, of a ton of people, but there are there are a lot of minorities. I think we're like forty something percent minority, um, and I think we're like forty one percent women or something like that now. So. Um, we have, a, we, have, we have a good amount of women engineers. I know that we were very active uh, this year about making sure we were able to close that gap down um, because I, we we have these tech breakfasts and we talked about it. We were like, hey, we say we want to be 50% women engineer and we tout these numbers, but uh, it wasn't like these the women weren't in these engineering positions. Um, they were like back office and other things. And we're like, all right, you're right. Like, let's not do that. Let's, let's make it right. And if you... If if you're intentional about something, um, there there are tons of great women engineers. I we we interviewed so many. I actually wish we had more positions because we 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 interviewed a ton of great women and some we just couldn't hire just because we just didn't have enough positions. Um, but it it is great. It's very interesting. Um, my team was about my team was about uh, it was close to fifty. It was like 60, 40 men women. Um, about 50% minority. I think it's 50% minority right now. And I was only a team of like eight. Um, and it's been all the things that people say about diversity and inclusion. It's very interesting because like I'm a minority, but like most teams you work on just, I mean, aren't very diverse at all. It's very interesting what comes out of working on a diverse team. Like, like it's so, it really is so much different and it really is. It's so much better. Like the, the diversity and thought is, is, 
is nuts. Like it's it's nuts how different people think. Um, you know, it, it's 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 crazy to see it in action. Um, it's crazy to see it in action and how it helps you get to answers faster. How it helps you get to to you know solve be able to solve problems faster uh, when you're working together. It's it's pretty interesting. Um, so I'm a I'm a huge believer in diverse teams. Like no matter what, like um, like I wouldn't even want like as a, as a, as a black. American, I wouldn't even want a team of all black Americans. Like it's, it's very important to me now to, to get that diversity of thought. I, I it, it's super powerful, uh, for sure. Um, and it's like, I mean, that's why I hope to be able to, I don't know, show a lot of people that they can get into tech. I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping people can kind of share their experience. I'm hoping I can create a community where, where we can make this a, a thing that people want to do. That's why another reason why I'm doing it on Twitch. Some, some younger people are already here. There's a lot of people who will probably be great at tech that are already on this platform and hopefully they're able to find this. Uh, bash all the way, Team Bash. I might make some Team Bash stickers or Team Bash shirt. I am Team Bash all the way. So I'm using it at the moment. Um, it's gonna be on your YouTube channel. Yes, this will be going up on my YouTube channel. Again, because uh, I read Twitch's terms of service as a Twitch affiliate, I'm actually not allowed to put this up on YouTube for 24 hours. So this will be up on YouTube in 24 hours. Um, cause I don't, I don't want no problems, uh, but it will be available here on Twitch for 14 or 60 days. I think 60 days, but one of the two, I'll find out <coughs> kitty. I've never seen kitty, but now I'm going to check that out. Now uh, you guys can't see what I'm looking at. I have to change my, I got a stream deck here. I'll have to change my, um, my scenes so that I can switch to my windows desktop if I need to. I'll check out Kitty. I, I I love checking out new terminals, so I'll check that out. Lots of them. I do have bash tickets on my laptop. I do too. I have. Uh, let me see if I can lift this up without uh, causing any problems. I got tons of stickers. You can see actually, you can see it right there. I have a bash sticker right there on my laptop. Got a bunch of stickers on my laptop as well. I'm a. I love stickers. It's a problem. I have a bunch of laptops and they're all covered. Um, and every so often I take them all off and refill them up. Um, so I'll definitely, I'll definitely be getting some stickers made, some mastermind stickers, some other stuff. <coughs> Kitty, a putty improvement. I, as much as people hate putty, I mean, there's no need for putty anymore with, uh, with Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, but, put, but I like putty. Um, the thing, multi-session, close thing to MOBA term on Linux. Um, has anyone heard of, man, someone was just telling me about some special like Tmux terminal. I don't know, Tmux dope, but um, I think there's some kind of special like Tmux term. I forgot what it's called. A bunch of people have been using it lately. Would you recommend that I use Ubuntu based distro for the course? I'm currently using Solus and it doesn't have the library selection of Ubuntu Fedora or Arch. Um, I don't know how comfortable, so, I thought I thought Solus was Debian based. I thought, but maybe not. Um, I would recommend you using a Debian or Ubuntu based uh, distro. To be one hundred percent honest, um, if you, if you aren't super comfortable with like being able either installing packages from source or being able to find out how to install the same packages, um, I mean, I think for the most part, uh, what what is what is Solus based? What is it based on? I thought Solus was just Ubuntu with uh, the budgie, with the budgie desktop environment, I thought. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure, uh, but yeah, I mean, if you can, I wouldn't reinstall, like if you have Solus uh, like already installed, I'd probably just go with Solus. Um, we could probably figure some stuff out, but uh, Oh, they wrote their own distro. Interesting. Um, I bet you could use a lot of the stuff. I bet you could use some type of uh, like maybe you could use like Flatpak or uh, I forgot what the other thing is. Flatpak or Snap maybe for for some of the stuff. Like I know for like Docker and stuff, you can use Snap. Um, uh. Get out of here. Get out of here. Snap Linux. Um, Snapcraft. Snapcraft. Um, maybe it's all Snap. 
Um, we're going to be, we're not going to, mm, you'll be able to do most of this stuff. Um, you'll be able to do the most of the stuff just fine. Starting with Damian Branch. Yeah. I think you'll be okay. Um, I use a jump box for everything and just stand up. Easy to do is as a temp dev. Yeah. Uh, that works only if you are not only, but it works best if you're a Vim user. I'm a Vim user, um, but sending up a jump box, like a Linux jump box is pretty great. Um, again, if you're, if you're a Vim user, um, that usually works. I mean, if you're not doing any kind of programming at all or very basic text editing, then, uh, I guess you could use nano, but I don't recommend it. Um, there's an RPM to tarball on it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Then you can go that road if you want. Let's see. Yeah. Um, so I, so I am a Vim user. Um, I love him. Um, let's see what we have here. We have a mastermind. So for anyone who doesn't know what Vim is, we'll definitely be talking about Vim shortly, but um, what is this? I need to make some modifications, but um, Vim is a, Vim is a, it's a modal ed, uh, text editor um, that exists inside of your terminal. Um, so I'll be doing a lot with Vim. Um, I'll be, we'll, we'll be working out of both Vim and VS Code. Uh, would it make sense? Um, simple edits I'll be doing out of Vim. For big things, I'll do it out of VS Code so people can follow along a little bit easier. <coughs> Python, even though I'm going to I'm gonna show everyone how to use uh, VS Code, um, I'm going to be doing everything almost purely out of Vim just because a lot of things we're going to be doing are be pretty simple. We're not going to be doing any huge multi, uh, like multi-file Python projects um, for a long time um, or or at all, um, I guess. So uh, I'll probably be doing everything out of Vim just to keep it really simple. Um, and so people can focus on the code and the concepts rather than the editor itself and getting all the stuff and all set up. But we'll be going through all that. But uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge Vim. I, I love Vim. I only recently switched back to Vim full time. And like, I'm, I'm committed, um, super committed to like making it my full time editor again. Um, mostly because I'm getting better at typing. I'm a terrible touch typist, awful. Um, and I recently got into, well, I've been into keyboards for a while. I know it's a weird thing, but I've, I don't know, man, I, I've, I've gone off the deep end with, when it comes to keyboards, um, building my own, I have, uh, got a bunch of stuff from, uh, from KBD. No, this is uh, yeah. From KBD fans. I got a, a tofu 60%. So I'm, I'm dropping down from, uh, I'm currently using a 10 keyless. I'm dropping down to 60%. I got a white, uh, I got a white uh, aluminum tofu 60% case. Looks pretty sweet. It's going to match all my colors, uh, mastermind colors. So just a white 60%. It's pretty heavy. Um, the tofu 60%. And I'm going to be taking the keycaps, the JTK Arctic keycaps off of here and putting it on the whiteboard. Um, they're pretty nice. Um, the keys, what do I have coming in? The switches I have coming in are the Zelios uh, V2s, um, super nice. Uh, I, I ordered one Zelios V2 to check it out and see if it's something that I wanted, because uh, I was trying to get some, um, for any of my keyboard fans out there, um, I was trying to get some Holy Pandas um, off of Mass Drop, but I, I couldn't find any anywhere. Um, so I got some Telios V2s that are coming in soon, and then I'll get that keyboard built. Um, I didn't go all in. Uh, I'm, I'm not soldering the PCB. I bought a hot swappable PCB. Um, yeah, I bought a hot swappable PCB to start with because it's my first build. But before the year's out, I will be soldering a keyboard when I'm starting to go for that in-game keyboard. Uh, 60%, yes, is, is the percentage of the full-size keyboard. So the one that I have now is a 10 keyless. So it doesn't have any number keys over here on the side. So it's 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 10 key, it's without those 10 keys. Um, but a 60% keyboard removes the entire function row, uh, and removes everything over here. So it'll be basically this over 
and minus the function keys. So I'll have to use a lot more um, combo keys and shortcuts to be able to hit keys that I wanna hit. Um, less keys to plug to hit. Um, but again, I'm trying to just get better. I'm getting, I'm really focused on getting better at typing and using all that stuff. So yeah, no arrow keys, no numpad, no F keys. So it's gonna be pretty interesting. Um, actually, I'll just show you. I keep forgetting. I have a, a computer here. Uh, so, ah, oh, that's trash. Um, watch this. So there's a cool stream. There's a guy who builds these like premium bespoke uh, keyboards on Twitch. His name is Teha Types. Um, and they're really expensive. But this, so there's a 65%. Uh, how does he have any work? Let's see. Where are all his archives? What does a 60% look like? Man, I, I thought he built, so this is a 60% keyboard right here. In the middle, if it ever shows. Everything just died on me. Yeah, that's a 60%. You can see there are no function keys, no number keys. Um, super weird. So as a Vim user, I think this is gonna be fine. Um, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Um, I'll build this one. My next one's probably gonna be a 65%, but there's not enough, like, it seems like there's not as many like keycap sets and things that work for that, but I'm oh, super nerdy, but I love it. Um, do you have a Spotify playlist for the music playing in the background? Yes, I do. Uh, it is the chill hop playlist. So if you're on spot, I'll post it. It is the, just search for chill hop on Spotify. What's happening here? It's this one, chill hop radio. It has a little, uh, there's a little like raccoon right here and then jazzy low hot fi hip hop. So yeah, chill hop radio. That's the one that I'm using um, on here, but I can post that as well. Just start show hop. It's on, there's a station on YouTube as well for show hop. Um, for sure. Vim or Neo Vim? This is um, Neo Vim. I use Neo Vim. So yes, I am a, so as much as I love Vim, I am a huge, I'm a huge fan of um, a VS Code. Like VS Code is, it's a phenomenal product. It really is. Um, it, re it really is. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not in servers as much anymore. Like actually my project actually doesn't have any servers or we can't log into any of them. <coughs> I'm kind of on this full immutability thing. No SSH keys, no nothing. So the few servers that we do have for a couple of the containers, we don't log into. Um, so I don't really do much of that anymore, but I'm sure there'll be a time when I have to mess around with them. I don't know. I just something about Vim. Once you, once you get comfortable with the, with the flow, once you get, you know, your, your, your muscle memory down, once you get all that stuff down, like it's just, you know, your shortcuts and everything. I don't know, man. The experience is just different. It's definitely just different. What other driver is the HHKB? Yeah, I, I checked it out. I, man, I'm, I, this keyboard game is is nuts. It's I it's I'm so mad. I'm so I'm actually really mad that I found it. Um, I'm really mad. I, I ordered it. It's coming in soon. It actually got returned to sender because I sent it back. To, I sent it to an old address, um, and I guess the house doesn't work anymore. I wasn't paying attention. Must have autofill. But I ordered a custom uh, cable for this keyboard for this build. It's like a coiled cable with an aviator connector and everything. It was ninety dollars. I ordered a ninety dollar USB cable. That's how deep I am. I ordered a $90 USB cable, and if my wife is watching, I'm sorry that I spent $90 on a USB cable. Um, but it was a while ago, so uh, yeah, I'm just getting it. Um, cool, glad you guys love the playlist. My son is about this. Rich choices my trip hop, awesome. Um, did you move to a co-working space? Great question. Um, I did, I did move to a co-working space. So, so a little bit more about mastermind maybe i should have brought this up earlier but um so the company i work for fearless is out of this space um uh, but um so i'm at a co-working space called spark spark baltimore it's pretty cool um uh, but mastermind so this this year this past year i actually went through a a business cohort um wasn't a wasn't a huge entrepreneur before this or anything like that but um i went through a business cohort called um called hutch uh it's pretty dope um taught me a lot um and so 
Mastermind is actually now much bigger than Mastermind Academy. Um, it's it's more than just this. Um, and I'm gonna I, I was gonna wait a little while to announce it because the goal I, I don't want people to think that I'm doing this purely for what Mastermind is. So um, out of this, um, Mastermind Academy is for people to learn tech. Like that is the goal. Um, it's it's not. I'm not here to try to scam people for money and like it's it's purely to give people information to give people the opportunity to learn tech. But um, one of the gripes, one of the things that I have a lot of trouble with is, uh, is now like after you people learn tech, like how do you get, like, how do you go ahead and get a job now? Um, and one of the things I hate the most, I, I, I dislike recruiters a lot. Um, as someone who's been in the tech industry for a while, um, all of you who are getting in the tech industry, you'll start to realize that recruiters will blow you up and you'll get recruiters trying to submit you for jobs that you like, you know, nothing about that you don't do. Um, because they're trying to, they're trying to put butts in seats. It's, it's lucrative. It's super lucrative. Uh, if you didn't know, um, recruiters basically get paid a percentage of whatever one year salary is agreed upon by the company that they place you at. So, uh, you, let's say you're worth a hundred thousand dollars. A recruiter puts you at a company after three months of you being there successfully. Um, they'll get paid, uh, anywhere between 20 and $30,000. I mean, usually it's between 20 and 30% of someone's one year agreed upon salary. Um, but these recruiters have no idea what they're recruiting for. Um, so I, I, I have trouble finding the value that they're providing to, to companies, um, or to the people that they're placing. Um, so, um, part of mastermind now is, uh, is, um, is talent is talent management is, is we, I do have a branch of this that it's now a talent agency. Um, and the goal is to, uh, to really represent one work with companies to figure out what, like work with organizations to make sure that they know what they need. Uh, a lot of organizations are growing, um, and just are like, Oh, we need a software. We need a super senior software dev, or we need a super senior DevOps engineer. Cause we have stuff we got to do when really you just have a site that you're maintaining that needs basic updates every so often and content updates, things like that. Um, so one, um, because, we, because I have years of, in, uh, a good amount of industry experience because the people who are working with me have a good amount of industry experience. One, we can understand what you really need. Um, two, we can advocate for engineers. So, uh, we're not just passing along resumes. Um, we're really, we're working with, we're working with, engineers to find out what they really want, what they really need. Um, we're not, we're never going to submit anyone for a, a JavaScript role, um, when they're a Java engineer or vice versa. You know, we, like we, we know, we know the differences here. We, we, we know the things that will help your, you advance your career. We're not just gonna, just cause we want to fill a seat. We're not going to send you off again to be a web dev when you want to do machine learning. Like it, even though you have the skills, like we, that's not the goal here. Um, yeah, the goal is to get people hired um, and to advocate for engineers and to help engineers grow. So we're we're a recruitment company. We're I hate to call it a recruitment company. We're a talent management company that helps. That's really focused on the engineer rather than the company. Um, <clears throat> small, obviously. The goal is not to be Aerotech and all these other companies. Uh, the goal really is just to again work on the pipeline. You know. Find people who want to learn tech, give them an opportunity to learn it, give them the resources um, and, the, and the space to pick it up um, and then help those people get jobs like it, very transparently, like we're, we're not like, it's very transparently. Like I, it's one of the things that I hate the most um, is that, you know, you, you apply for a job, you don't hear anything for weeks. Um, the, the goal is to make the process super transparent to know every step of the way where you're at. If, if someone doesn't like you, we'll let you know, like, it's okay. Like it's okay. We'll work on something else. Um, uh, we'll help you work on your deficiencies. We'll help you work on anything that you need. Cause again, the goal is to help get you a job. Uh, and the goal is to advocate for you to help companies see your value. Um, past just looking at a resume. Um, so yeah, so masterminds bigger than that. That that's a long story to kind of talk about why I'm working out of a co-working space, uh, rather than the house. I will be doing some streams from the house as well. I have a whole setup there as well. Um, but yeah, the, uh, yeah, masterminds a little bit bigger now than, than the Academy alone. Uh, so yeah. Um, them adventures pretty dope uh, for sure. Um, put myself to learn Vim for one year now and I hope it starts this year. Yes. <clears throat> the learning curve is a little bit steep. It is it's steep, but once you get, once it's, it's so satisfying. Once you get it, uh, you can move so quickly. Yeah. Vim adventures is dope. 
end up with a bunch of keyboards under the desk. Yeah, I, man, it's gonna be a real problem, man. Like, this is gonna be a super duper problem. Uh, I, it's just one, the parts and things are rare. Uh, which which is even like you don't just you can just buy stuff and get it like you gotta wait for drops you gotta wait for restocks you gotta wait for like i don't know man it's i don't know there's there's a whole experience to buying and building these keyboards and once i learn how to solder i don't know man i might have to start my own little uh keyboard building uh little little job here what was how let's see i always felt like recruiters were or taking a piece oh all the salary that was offered. Yeah, they are. They're they're taking a piece of the salary that offered. Um so um so when they are when, when they offer you less and they take the top, that's usually so there is um sometimes they have contract to hire or they or they're just contracting. And so yeah, that, that is what they'll do if you're contracting through that company. They will they'll charge sixty dollars an hour for you, but only pay you forty five dollars an hour. That is something that they do. But generally the model is for permanent hires is a percentage of the agreed upon salary again generally 20 to 30 percent um just to let you know we're not if it, if there are any uh anyone looking to hire out there um our rates are substantially lower uh for a number of reasons um our rates are only 15 percent and anyone who wants to work with us and if you engineers out there who want to work with mastermind to get placed uh we give you a signing bonus of five percent so we're only taking 10% again, because the goal uh, one isn't to grow crazy big and to be this big juggernaut putting butts in seats. The goal is to genuinely help people get jobs, um, jobs that'll help them grow at jobs at companies that matter. We won't, we won't just work with any company. We kind of have to vet the company. Um, yeah, making sure people have the resources, making sure people have uh, have created the space to help engineers grow. Um, so yeah, so we're not, again, it's not about, it's not about getting crazy rich. Um, the goal is to help people, um, and hopefully companies are, again, because we're taking less of their money, um, companies are willing to take, um, chances on more well-rounded engineers, um, cause they, cause they kind of have to, um, everyone looking for 10 X engineers, um, we can't have that. Uh, Java is a JavaScript is ham, is a hamster. Absolutely. After run, thank you for the time. Exceptional. Absolutely. We'll talk more. I appreciate you coming through. Do you know Johnny Borsico? Absolutely. I love Johnny. Johnny got me into Go. I went to one of his Go Bridge workshops. It's the best. I've run I've run uh, two Go Bridge workshops now. Um, but yeah, I see Johnny all the time. I was just I was just with him a couple weeks ago uh, in December. We were, uh, ran one out of Smart Logic. Johnny's dope. If anyone's trying to learn Go, uh, when we get to the Go course, I, I'm, Johnny's course is in my link. Uh, it's something that I found super valuable. Um, Great person, follow him on social media. I'll give you all his, I'll give you guys all his information as we get in the go. Um, because he runs a podcast, everything. He's pretty dope. Uh the Triple Byte has DevOps quizzes they advertise now. I did not see that. That's awesome. Um, that was one of my problems with Triple Byte. I was like, man, everyone's all about the dev. Um, it's great that they're doing that. I'll check that out. We'll maybe we'll do some stuff live on there. Maybe we'll go through and try to answer some of the questions, something maybe we'll expose ourselves. <laughs> uh or we'll show everyone that we're great. But yeah, we'll check it out. Everything's an order from China. All the all the all the keyboard stuff. All my stuff came from China. It came fast though. Uh, my entertainment staffing is different. I'm looking for a job. Dope. Uh, my email again is abrooks at mastermind.io. Um, send me a resume. Uh, everyone, if if you want if you want me to have your resume, send it. I'll reach out to you. Um, we can talk about it. Talk about what you want to like. Talk about what you want to do. Uh, again, because the goal is what you like. What you want to do. Like I'm I'm. I'm advocating for you, the engineer. I'm not trying to stick people in the random jobs. Um, the goal is to find something for you um, and to advocate for you to really, like I'm really gonna be learning about what your strengths are and kind of where you can, like if there's if there's places, I really wanna get people jobs a little higher than they are now. So like, no matter what level you're at, mid, junior, senior, like get you something a little bit higher that you can uh, advocate for you. So someone will allow you to come in that position and grow. Um, and help give you resources on the back end, um, not just as, as an engineer, as a company of engineers. Um, we're never just going to stick you somewhere and leave you hanging. Uh, you'll have you'll be able to reach back and use get resources, use uh, use us as a soundboard. Um, you know, have resources to to get up to speed um, so that you're not alone. That's one of the things that sucks sometimes is a recruiter will stick you somewhere and you're just alone and you don't know what to do. Um, so we're, we're giving you those resources as well, but, um, yeah, reach out. We'll figure out what you want to do and we'll help you 
find something um, in that in that realm for sure. <laughs> Resume tips, structure, keywords, format, etc. So the biggest um, structure is 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 simple. I, I'm actually going to show you guys some examples of good resumes. A lot of people put too much on their resumes nowadays. Um, keywords keywords are important. Um, keywords are very important. Um, the resume that I that I like is a little bit different, but like most companies, most recruiters uh, are doing keyword searches. They're literally just searching for these DevOps terms that they don't know what they mean. Um, and that's how they're finding people. So keywords are important. They're very important. Um, and format, um, I have a, again, I have a few example formats that I will definitely show to you because um, resumes, resume writing is important. Resumes are important. Um, find me a role position that before, and I will happily give you 10 to 15%. Um, also, I'll, I'll look, like I said, I'll, I'll post my email. Actually, this is my email. I'll go through it. I'll speak with you. I'll find out exactly what you want to do. I'll find you something that you want to do. Um, a lot of people looking for remote, for remote roles. Um, I, I have a lot of rem I, I have a lot of remote remote roles um, coming on deck. Um, yeah, because I'm, I'm again, I'm only and I'm only working with companies that I feel um, are good for the engineer or, or have things set up for the engineer to thrive. Um, so yeah, I, I hopefully oh every. I've been put in front of companies that were awful engineering companies. They, they had engineering jobs, but they were awful companies for engineers. Um, and I, I, that's something that like really sits wrong with me. Um, so we do a little bit of vetting there. It might about that at all. Yeah. Um, that's who I call you. Yep. Six AM here. I was in gym. Awesome. <laughs> when when you wake up, appreciate it. Yeah, definitely, definitely send me an email. Do you follow on the one page resume camp? So my resume is not one page. Um, I I prefer. I I haven't figured out a way to perfect the one page resume for myself. Uh, I prefer one page resumes. Like to look at them, but. Again, I, I don't think I'm the traditional hiring manager. Uh, I'm not the traditional hiring manager. Um, I'm, I'm okay with it being multiple pages. I don't think that that's crazy at all, um, especially for <coughs> the nature of the work that we do. <clears throat> um, but I know, I just, I know that I now understand how time consuming hiring is for companies. Um, and I understand why one page would be beneficial. Um, yeah, play a lot, like a lot of places, Hiring's hiring's expensive. So let's say you don't have someone who's dedicated to hire. Now you've got your senior engineers taking looks at resumes. They may be billable. So, you know, someone you may be paying $70, $80 an hour. Uh, now you basically are paying them $140 to look at for two hours, look at resumes, for people they might like, looking through a bunch of resumes. Uh, they're not, this is not their job. So they're not, they don't really want to look through pages and pages of resumes. Uh, so I get the one page resume thing. Um, I do think it's a safe bet to go with a one page resume. Um, but again, for a lot of people that I've worked with and myself, I have trouble getting it down to one page and still displaying uh, what you know. I actually did a test um, with a one page resume that I created as well. I did a, page, a test with a one page resume and a three page resume um, and got way more hits back for the three page resume because it was just very difficult to to get that one page right. Uh, cool. Um, send me a, a derpy email in a sec. Um, I did an interview for fun. I did the dev interview, wasn't too bad. Yeah. Doing interviews for fun is a is a good thing. If you got if you got the patience, um, I went through a period of time where I did a bunch and it was super valuable. Like I did like I, I want to say I did. So I've definitely I've for sure done over a hundred interviews uh, in my career for sure. Um, but I, there was a like the period where I started. I did like I want to say I did something like thirty five or forty of them uh, after I had gotten a job and just because it was like. I enjoyed it. Like I had some that were terrible. I, I had a Skype interview that went so bad that I closed the computer in the middle of it because it was going so terribly. Uh, but all those were learning experiences. I just wrote down all the things that I couldn't answer. I wrote down all the things that like that. I was like, oh man, this is crazy. And I went and again, watched YouTube video. I sat in Starbucks 
watch YouTube videos, write a couple things so I could at least talk about it. Maybe I didn't know the thing greatly, but I could talk about it now. Um, and that helped me a ton. Um, we sign for your emails. Um, so that's a great question. So I do have a, the regular website. So I sent you guys to academy.mastermind.io, but you can just go to mastermind.io um, and reach out to me there through that contact page. If you need to, <coughs> it has some information. Um, actually, there's a big update going out to the site really soon. Um, but yeah, some information there about just kind of who we are, what we do. Um, but you can, you can send some stuff out through there as well. Um, what's the most a DevOps guy can get paid? That's a great question. Duck butter. Uh, welcome. Welcome back. Hello. Um, the most a DevOps guy can get paid. I mean, that depends on where you are in the country. Again, um, I would say the average, the average upper echelons of normal DevOps positions across the country, at least from what I've seen, from what I've seen, this is only my experience, <coughs> is about 180. It's kind of top tier, uh, lead maybe, uh, DevOps engineers. Um, and so, so yeah, so look, people are seeing 235 in New York. Um, I've seen those at like, so I've seen, I've seen bigger full total compensation packages. I haven't seen many bigger base salaries uh, in my searches. Um, that were that were pure de like a DevOps engineer role. I've seen a lot of lead. I've seen some lead ones that were bigger, like like engineering leads, like DevOps focused engineering leads and stuff that were like two fifty um, around there. But um, yeah, I mean, for my searches, I've only seen stuff um, up to like one eighty. Uh, depends on where you are. Like here in here in Baltimore. It's hard to get if if you're just a DevOps engineer, uh, one like you're probably capping out around 150, uh, probably somewhere around there. If you're in the DC area, it's probably you know top tier is probably 160, 170. Um, like that's that's top tier. That's like that's like you have a lot of experience. You've seen a lot of stuff. Um, but that's interesting because again, I think it's I think it's relatively easy. Uh, on the East Coast, at least, to get, I think it's relatively easy to get between, you know, one fifteen and one thirty five. Is like any job, you, like, <laughs> like anywhere between one year of experience and like six year experience is probably going to net you somewhere in there. <clears throat> um, if you're just looking for a comfortable job, a good, good, everywhere has pretty good benefits. Um, I did see some. I, so I actually talked to Amazon just to kind of find out what they're paying. Um, their total compensation package is pretty good. I was surprised at the total compensation package. Their base salary, though, I think was around the 160 mark. Um, but they have like bonuses and all this other stuff. Like, I man, I don't know. I, I, I actually, I don't know what it would like to be to, to like get like people are. I know people who are getting like forty thousand dollar bonuses like twice a year, and I'm like, what man? Like that sounds phenomenal. Uh, that would be great. But again, it's not always about the money. Um, that, that comes with some stresses that, uh, that other roles don't have. Um, this is better than what I had to pay field. What's your, I'm, I'm very interested to hear what your field is. Uh, there's a lot of underpaid fields. My roles are to come in in DC. Equity is loaded on the back end, though. You get most of your equity in three to four years. That's fair. Bioinformatics. I mean, I don't know anything about the bioinformatics field, but uh, it sounds like you need to know a lot. So hopefully you get paid for it. I, I, I know what it is, but uh, I, it, it feels like you need to know a lot. So make them pay you more. Just, just make them. I don't know how. Just make them. I mean, that looks decent, median. I don't know, man. I don't. Well, I will say this: bioinformatics scientist sounds like something really. Oh yeah, you need PhDs. Super underpaid then, because uh, I know plenty of people without degrees at all uh, making making that. So yes, super underpaid if you if you need if you need a PhD for sure. Oh yeah, cleared position. So again, I'm in the, I'm 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 in Baltimore, right down the street from NSA, uh, DC area. There are a lot of clear positions around here. 
there are a lot of clear positions and clear positions pay super well uh, but you got to be willing to di live a different life um, I don't think it's all, I don't think it's all that crazy uh, but you know having to get you know approval before you leave the country and stuff like that is just like they can tell you you can't go home like I know people who couldn't go see family for years because the government wouldn't let them go to a, a certain country and you know then then the government opens it up for a little bit and uh and so they gotta rush off and go see their family while they can i don't know that's not the life i'm trying to live also um in recent years i've become a i don't know i didn't used to care about i used to did not care about what the work was um and now i care a little more about the work um and and, and what it is and who it's affecting um i don't know it, it's, it's it's changed in the it's changed in the past few years so you know, I, I would, I would, there's, there's definitely a moral gray area in a lot of cleared space. Not a lot, but well, yes, a lot of clear spaces. So there's a, there can be a moral gray area and I just, I don't want to mess with it. I just, I don't want to mess with it. I'm not, uh, if I'm chasing, if I want to chase the money, I'll chase it a different way. Um, rather than, uh, rather than do that. But it is, if you need a job and you're wanting to get cleared, you can find someone who will clear you, man. You'll, you'll be good for, for life. If you're willing to do that. Uh, for sure. <clears throat> I mean, one year of experience is good. <clears throat> I'm telling you, I I jumped. I'm man, I made like a 15k jump from my first job to my second job, but I was also getting paid. Who I was getting paid some some doo doo for my first job. I gotta be honest. And we'll we'll definitely talk about that some more. Some salaries, but uh, I, my first job was at a was at a company called Servant. It was a web hosting company. Um, but at the same time, they, they told me what it was. They they basically uh, it was like a Linux web hosting company, and they would basically find people out of college, and they would pay you crap. Um, I think I think I got paid like I think it started out like fifteen dollars an hour, and then they made, once I got salaried, it was like thirty eight thousand dollars. I was driving from Baltimore to Northern VA at the time. I had a Mustang. I was tripping. I I was spending all my money on gas and food, and uh, I think I was going to pay like thirty eight thousand dollars. Uh, 37, 37, that was a weird number. It was $37,000 a year. Um, but it was a cool place. They, they, like for six months, they sat me down and they taught me, they taught me Linux, which was great. And they taught me how to manage web servers and stuff. So it was valuable, certainly valuable. But I think I went from after a year, after a year there, I think I was able to go, man, I think I went from 37 to like 58 or 60. Uh, so that was great. Um, sometimes you gotta be able to, you know, you gotta, you gotta put in a little work. Um, I put in a little work, a little sucky work, but I don't know. I met a, a lot of cool people. They actually work with a couple people now again uh, here where I am for sure. Um, but it's, it, I don't know. It's very interesting. But yeah, one year of experience is around the time when you can really start moving and doing other things. Like people, people like that to see that one year, they're willing to kind of take a chance on you at that point. Uh, cool. See you tomorrow, Alex. Um, what do we tech people in these keyboards? I don't know, man. I really, I don't know. I don't know how I got into it, but I love it. I love it. Everything. But I also like to, I like, I like customizing my own things. So like my computer here is a custom build. My computer at home is a custom build. I modify cars. Like, I don't know. I like to, I like that. I like building things. Um, so it's, I guess it's just another thing. I'm sure I'll find something else that I can waste my money on. Um, File automation, essentially just an admin for managed file transfer app. Would you recommend a plausible path to becoming a DevOps engineer? So, you uh, sound like file automation, um, managed file transfer app. Man, that like this sounds like a, that sounds like a perfect uh, pilot for Python. <coughs> um, I think there's a lot of ways you could use um, Python to automate a lot of your job um, XP. Um, Plausible path to becoming a DevOps engineer. Again, right now, right now for anyone who's coming in cold, I truly think the way in is, cl is cloud, um, is is AWS or Azure, um, and going to, going to grab a cloud cert, grab an associate level, first level cloud cert, um, really spend some time learning the cloud. And I think there are so many cloud jobs out there. There's, there's so many cloud jobs out there that I think that's the easiest way. And that's the easiest way to focus on one thing. Um, and I think it's the technology that you'll be as a DevOps engineer, you're probably working with the most, um, cloud, 
you know, cloud technologies. Um, so I, I would I would start there. Um, but I do think that there's some uh, definitely some Python stuff you can do in that role that you're at now that can make your job super easy. Uh, making good money affiliated, K, but I'm not. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're good. You are, man. I don't hear it. You talking about one year of experience and you making eighty k? I don't want to hear it. Like I said, thirty seven k. I started out thirty seven k. I thought I was rich. I had no bills. I don't know what I was thinking, man. Then I got bills. That was stupid. Don't get bills. I just got rid of one bill. And that's great. A big bill. I had, like I said, I got rid of my WRX. Sold it. Sad to see it go. But again, right now I'm just trying to get rid of all the bills, pop like as many bills as I can, so that I can uh. Do what I want. Like I had two cars for no reason. Two cars that kind of serve the same purpose. Um, but I want that truck so I can make that race car. So uh yeah. Um Tofu H can we lay out here? Dope, dope, yeah. I said, I, my, my tofu's an, is ANSI layout. I ordered the wrong um I ordered the wrong plate, but I think I'm gonna try it and then I think if I don't if I don't like the sound, I'm gonna grab a I'm gonna grab a brass plate. Actually, I think it's gonna be interesting with the light colors, but I want a brass plate. Um, we'll see. Between cars, what kind of car, what kind of race car do you wanna build? So, like I said, to start off, um, I want something that I can, one, not be afraid to crash. Um, and that's not too fast for me. I'm, I'm pretty bold, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a risk taker. So I want something that's not gonna kill me at the gate. So I actually want something slow. I wanted a Miata because uh, I drove a Miata and it was great, but I'm too big for a Miata. I'm just, I, I can't, I can't heel toe as, as easy as I would like to in a Miata, but it would be cheap to run. Um, so I'm probably gonna grab, um, I might grab a, because of the price point, I'm probably gonna grab a 370Z to start. I want something real wheel drive, manual, real wheel drive. Um, I'll probably grab like a 370Z to start with. Um, naturally aspirated, I don't gotta worry about blowing turbos or anything in the beginning. Um, but the goal is to work up to, to a vet, like a, to a race vet. I would love to get good enough to, to race a vet. Um, I, I was looking at some, uh, like the 86 platform, but, um, I don't know. Um, probably, probably, a, a C6. I mean, C7 vets are coming down substantially. Um, I think it would be cool to have a, what my real goal is again, I hope my wife's not watching the goal is the truck. Um, I need, I want to, I want to. I wanna, I want a hauler. I want like a 250, F-250 or something. I really want like a Dodge Dually or something, but I want a hauler, a trailer. Uh, I want a full on track car. So something cheaper like the 370Z, something I can get uh, for, for by cash. <coughs> um, so I can build out to be a full race car. But then I want like a, I want like a vet as like a street. It's like a, I take it to the track like once or twice a year, but it's my street. It's my street car, my back roads weapon um, that I, you know, to set up for the street. Uh, but I, I really want to, a vet is a vet. I, I, I want a vet so bad. Um, I want a vet so bad. And I'm just being patient. I'm being patient right now. Um, this is why I try to get people into tech. Like DevOps, I can afford a vet right now. I can afford one right now if I wanted one. Um, but um, we're not right now, just a number of reasons. My wife's in school, we're paying for school cash. So again, this is, this is what DevOps, the, the life of a DevOps engineer allows you to do. You know, we have a house, we have car, we have our cars, we have a dog that we're taking care of. Everything we were doing, we're paying for my wife's school cash, out of pocket, um, no problem. So we're just, you know, being smart about things, you know, not going out and wasting your money on a on a vet right now. And I don't, I don't need a vet right now, uh, but I would love to have a vet, but I think the goal is to get a, a I want to get a race car first, then I'll get a street car. If I can make it the same thing, I'll just be scared. I want a race car. I'm not scared of crash though so c5 i might get a c5 vet that 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 is that is so many people tell me to get a c5 vet uh it's just ugly man I just, well they're not ugly i think like a brz or frs or 370 looks better than c5 but they're they're amazing bang for your bucks right now for sure um I actually i actually drove a c5 uh z06 and i was like man this is excellent i mean it's 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 a lot slow it's, it's not as visceral as some of the newer ones um, but uh, great price, um, fast. Yeah. Considering it to me out of the so if I, I would have a Miata right now, if I could fit comfortably in a Miata, uh, cyber truck and call it a day. If cyber trucks about to come out, I would, I'm really considering putting money down on the Rivian. I don't know if anybody knows about the Rivians, but, uh, but I don't know, man, like that's going to take so much money away from my vet or from whatever track car I want to build. Um, I can get a. You know, you can get a you can get an F one fifty for dirt cheap. Uh, to be honest, like they they, they give them away sometimes. Um, I don't need anything super crazy, but um, we'll see. 
we'll see. I mean, I, the Cybertruck's ugly, but uh, again, my truck, for me, a truck will be function over form. It's ugly. It is it's super ugly. Um, but I think it'll do what it needs to do. I love my Miata, but I'm 6'1", barely fit, so I hear you on that. Yeah, I'm not that tall. Like, I'm only 5'8", but I'm wide, man. I'm like, I'm wide. And I do fit. I do fit in a Miata. Um, but I have, I have a big, my, my legs are big and like, again, I can't, I can't heel toe comfortably. I sat in a, a NB Miata and I was good in the NB Miata minus the steering wheel was big. So my knees would hit it a little bit. If I swapped it out for small steering wheel, I might be able to do an NB Miata. Um, but I really like the ND Miatas. Um, sorry, not NB Miatas, NC Miatas. I'm tripping. NC Miata. Um, I had an NB Miata. Um, or, I mean, uh, uh, NC Miata is what I drove in where I could fit. Um, but the NDs are so nice, man. ND Miatas are super nice. That's what I really want. Um, but yeah, the NCs are really nice too. They, re they really are really nice. Um, but I was, then I sat in uh, 86. I sat in the BRZ. I, it was it was perfect. Like it was so much more, it was so much more comfortable. And I figured if I'm going to go small car, light car, I would go with that. Um, yeah, I think I would go with that. But I don't know. I don't know. Like, or is it right now? I'm a big dude, but right now I drive a Fiesta ST, and the Fiesta is more fun than my WRX was. The Fiesta is the like I don't know. I don't know if there's a more fun car for the money. Maybe, maybe the Miata. Maybe the Miata. I've, I've driven some Miatas, but I don't know, man. That Fiesta. I do a lot of back roads driving. There's actually really good uh, back roads uh, here in Baltimore. Um, like right outside the city, I take back roads up to PA. Everything. There's a lot of good driving roads in Maryland. Um, now, Fiesta's front wheel, it, that's the only thing that sucks. Uh, Fiesta's front wheel drive, and it is, it is, everything about the car is so tight. Like, it, it's like, it, it's, I don't know, man. It, it's so little and uh, and light, and like, back row, for back road driving, it's amazing. It's not great for highway cruising, but um, yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. Uh, I thought about turning into a track car, but I need, I need rear wheel drive. Like, I need, or all wheel, but pr preferably real, rear wheel um yeah so but it's fun it's, it's definitely fun I've, I've been surprised uh and living you can live in baltimore city man i can't tell you how people get so mad at me when like we'll pass parking spaces and, and nobody can fit i can fit i can fit in that parking space um so i it, it's a good city car that's the reason i kept that over the wrx um because i was trying to figure out which one to get rid of um, for now, I kept the cheaper car um, again, so I can have more money to buy what I want. Um, once we decide, uh, everything is good to go. It seems like a lot of people are interested in cars on here. I love that. I I, I can talk about cars all day. It'd be an S two thousand. I would love to get an S two thousand. They're just asking stupid money for S two thousands right now for old S two thousands with a lot of miles. Um, why AP one over AP two? Um, I, th I, th I thought the AP2s are when they fixed um, the suspension issues. If you go all-wheel drive, learn front-wheel drive, it transfers really over. I I've heard that. I've definitely heard that. I, I, I would really like to say rear-wheel drive. Um, got to bounce. All right, see you, Dre, Gary. Um, cool, see you Tuesday. How's it going? I found your master my Twitter. Dope, dope. Welcome. Uh, let's see if I can read this. Cthulhu. Uh, AG Creek. I don't know, man. People be reading these. I watch other streamers and they read these names so fast. I'm not good. I, maybe I just can't read. I don't know. Um, I don't know. But welcome. I'm glad you found the channel. Um, we're at the end now. We're just kind of talking. We're supposed to be, man, we're supposed to be done a long time ago. So uh, probably get off in a little bit. Uh, but it seems a lot of people are still hanging around. So I'm glad you guys are glad you guys are on here. Uh, AP One's a 9K red line. I didn't know that. Um, and no traction control, I like that. Intro, DevOps boot camp, which DevOps. About to design a custom overlay for you. Dude, that'd be great. I need that. Let me know, I'll buy it. Like, I need some, uh, I was gonna try to do all the custom overlay stuff, but uh, I wanted to, I kinda wanted to keep it simple. Um, but yeah, it, actually someone was supposed to do it for me and they they kinda flaked on me a little bit, but that's fine. Um, not a big deal, but yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. All right, I'll check it out. I'll definitely check it out. Um, I definitely could use, definitely could use that. Um, but yeah, I, I love, I love so many people talking about cars. I love, again, I love cars, man. I, I did a, 
I had done a I had done like a little mini track day with a friend. I did some autocross. Uh, then I went out to Speed Vegas a couple years ago. Um, Speed Vegas in, in Las Vegas. And I thought it was gonna be dumb. I, Cause I did one of those like dream driving events, but it was basically a, a autocross with Ferraris and Lamborghinis like in a random parking lot. And they make you seem like it's gonna be a big track day, but it was garbage. Um, but I went to Speed Vegas and I drove. I got. I drove first. I drove a Cayman. I drove a Cayman GTS. And I drove a Mercedes uh, AMG GTR, and I drove a um, I drove a, a Nissan GTR, and I drove a 911. And that was the first time I realized one horsepower. I didn't care about horsepower anymore, uh, or quite as much, um, because that that came in GTS was the best handling car, like around track at least. Like it was so much more fun than all the rest of the cars. <laughs> Everything else was kind of like hard to drive. It was pretty. It was pretty interesting, um, but because I got to like get real training, um, like we, we had someone next to us who was really letting us. Like he was letting me really drive. Like this wasn't like they didn't govern anything. Like it was like yo go drive. Like he was making me go faster than I was comfortable going, but I loved it. Um, and getting that kind of uh, attention, I like I fell in love with it, and, and I really started like focusing on driving concepts and like again learning how to really drive heel towing uh learning about you know apexes and learning about car control and, and weight transfer and stuff like that so like i can't wait to like I've, like i've done a few track days but um there's a there's a track close to me uh, west virginia called summon point they do some friday at the track stuff uh so i'm gonna start there um so that i'm not doing this on the road like i've been doing it on the road <laughs> um i need to do it in a place that's a little bit safer uh but i, I want to learn how to drive like i want to learn I want to learn how to really drive, um, and the goal is to do some um, some time attack, uh, maybe next season. Uh, I hope to have everything in place to do a full global time attack series, or maybe grid life uh, time attack series. We'll see. Um, but that's the goal. We'll see what happens. Um, look up Drive Sixty One. I will check that out right now. Sixty One. A driver Sixty One. Driver Sixty One. And I can't type driver. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know, but I've already half of what I know is from this this guy. Yes, thank you for that. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't recognize the name. I thought it was like some kind of program or something. Yeah, Driver sixty one. I watch his YouTube stuff. Uh, most of the stuff I learned is from him. Uh, he taught me a lot. Sure. So WRX two being in winter climate, but I haven't had any problems. I I loved I love my WRX. Um, I will say I had a, so I had a 17 WRX 2017 and I, I was stupid and I put springs on it. So I had a RCE yellows on it and man, in, in Baltimore city, that thing, that thing would beat me up. Like that's the one reason I got rid of it. Like it was kicking my butt. Like it would hurt. Like my wife hated riding in it. Uh, but it was quick. It was fun. It was quick. Had an exhaust on it. I had a stage at a pro a stage one pro tune. Um, sounded sounded pretty good. It was fun. Fourteen messages were deleted. Sorry, Andy. I don't know what happened. I don't. I no idea what happened there. But uh, you should probably stop spamming in caps now. I had the cross track and the springs bounced you all over. I love the cross track. So I if yeah, I would. I I wanted the cross track for a while. Like the goal for a while before I, I knew I wanted to race. Was to have like a cross track and like a Corvette. Like I was like gonna be it, like a little a car that kind of did everything and a Corvette. But now nah, I, I need a truck. I got I gotta I gotta race. Um, yeah, I gotta race. Cool. All right, so it's eleven seventeen. I can hang around all night. Thanks everyone for staying around for a while. I'm gonna get out of here. I do got I do have work in the morning, uh, and I'm streaming every day, almost just about every day this week. So back tomorrow for Python. Python's gonna be in the morning. I mean, Python's tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, intro to Python again. It'll be syllabus day, much like tonight. Uh, but we'll also be going over the beginnings of programming tomorrow. Uh, but we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back with uh, programming, intro to programming uh, for DevOps. On Wednesday, oh no, Tuesday. Sorry, I'm gonna get the days mixed up a lot for a while on Tuesday. But uh, yeah, hopefully to see some of you all tomorrow night. Um, if not, I'll see you all on Tuesday. Have a great night. Oh, is the homework listed anywhere? Uh, the homework is to check your email. You'll have a you'll have a link to if you're subscribed. Check your email. 
uh, you'll get a you get an email from Twitch uh, right now. Um, well, by right now is as soon as I hit stop streaming on this stream deck, uh, and it will have a link to getting into the Google Classroom. The homework is in the Google Classroom. Uh, you have all week to do both. I mean, we really have unlimited time to do both. You'll have access to Google Classroom forever. Um, but yes, the information will be on there. Just go over the information, watch the videos, uh, do some of the assignments, um, have a good time with it. Um, so yeah, thank you. Good night, everybody.